Naruto groaned as he started to stir from his mini coma as Hikari called it in his mind. Apparently he used so much chakra even with the boost from Hikari that he suffered rather severe chakra exhaustion due to the increase and then decrease of chakra through his coils thus putting him into a miniature coma. The first thing he saw was the white ceiling of a hospital, oh how he hated hospitals. They would mistreat him when he was younger like the rest of the village, he stopped coming after the accident on his fifth birthday because he was protected and didn't need to go anymore which made them happy. His mind went back to what happened before, he cursed himself. The village now knew about his Sharingan and the more experienced Shinobi knew about his Mangekyo not to mention his skills. He also remembered falling to his knees before losing consciousness and everyone who cared for him calling his name, all except Karinai. This hurt him, it felt like someone was crushing his heart. He steeled himself, as soon as he was out of hospital he would find out what she was keeping from him that was tearing them apart. They weren't even a couple yet and he knew they wouldn't work, before he could think any more a voice he recognized all too well spoke, yo. Hello Aero Senin. Gaki, how many times do I need to tell you not to do that? I lost count, I'm not in the mood at the moment sensei, please tell me what you want so I can be alone to think. That stopped Jiraiya in his step, if his godson called him sensei it meant he was serious as he could be, I want to take you on a two and a half year to three year training trip, I know you're strong but you won't be strong enough for what is to come if you don't come with me. Let me think about it, I will be at the north gate tonight between six and nine if I am going, please wait for me there. I need to sort some things before I go. Jiraiya nodded and left him alone, Naruto sighed and decided he would visit his inner demon. Not that he could call her that after all she done for him, she was practically his big sister and he silently vowed to find a way to allow her some sort of freedom from the seal. Entering his mindscape he still marveled at his previous work of changing it from a big sewer to what it was now, he found Hikari laying on the hammock in the front porch of the house like she was expecting him. Hello Hikari-chan. Hello Naruto, great fight earlier. Arigato, tell me did I or did I not imagine it when I heard my friends call my name when starting to fall unconscious but Karina I just looked away. She hesitated, she honestly liked her container, he was a good person and a friend and she came to think of him like a little brother that she doted on to keep safe. She knew of his little crush on the Jinjutsu mistress when he was younger but said nothing, apparently he was finally figuring out what she had long ago. Asterisk sigh asterisk it's true. His shoulder slumped and he let out a heavy sigh. We will have to look into this later, what's the damage report for my body after that little fight? If that was your idea of little I would hate to see big, but I digress, you had severe chakra exhaustion from the increase and dramatic decrease of chakra in your coils from me pumping you full of chakra in the fight, it put you into a min coma so to speak and you've been out almost a week. Any visitors? Kakashi, Itachi and your mother under a few injutsu hinge. The old Hokage survived his fight with Orochimaru thanks to your clone but was unable to visit due to hospitalization, he is old after all and he does replenish chakra slower than younger people. So no Kurinai again? He said with slight anger in his voice. No sorry. Is it alright if I just stay here with you for now? The outside is cruel at the moment. He asked and she immediately agreed, what kind of sister would she be if she didn't comfort her little brother? And so they sat under a tree and fell asleep next to one another with the sun inside his mind shining through the tree leaves onto their bodies, that was until he felt someone enter his hospital room from outside his mindscape, he left Hikari sleeping and exited his mind. He opened his eyes to see Sakura and Sasuke, hey guys. They both were startled by him suddenly waking up. Before Sakura could get a word in Sasuke being the almighty Uchiha that he was demanded that he fight him. Why? You are strong. Stronger than I would like to admit, the rumors are already spreading, Kanoha's red devil capable of taking on an army of men by himself, I need that power, I want that power so I can fight Danzo and avenge my family. And you think fighting me will help you? Sasuke looked on and activated his two tomoed Sharingan and looked directly into his eyes, yes. All right then, meet me on the roof in five minutes. Sasuke nodded and walked off towards the roof with his loyal fangirl in tow. She had wanted to come see her teammate and thank him for what he had done to help with the invasion but apparently Sasuke had other ideas. 
Naruto lay there for a minute or two before sunshining to his compound where he was immediately hugged for dear life by his mother who was in the garden, Kazen, I'm fine. I know, but don't you ever worry me like that again. It's a mother's prerogative to worry, and with what you done a week ago no one is going to take it away from me. She stated finally. Hi Kazan, I have some things on my mind could you please tell me where Nisan is? One of the things involves him. He is in the kitchen making some lunch. Arigato Kasan and I will try not to scare you as much, although this is the lifestyle of a shinobi, but I will try my best not to seek out such battles in the future for your sake mother. He finished with a small smile before walking into the kitchen. Hello Otudo, you're looking well, he said without turning around and before he stepped fully into the kitchen. How do you always do that Nisan? Naruto asked, this was annoying. Itachi always could tell when Naruto was around him since he was younger and he had no idea how he did it. Itachi turned round and smiled, before poking his brother in the head, it's a secret. He said simply as Naruto rubbed his head. He stuck his tongue out at his big brother like a little kid, before sitting at the table. In two minutes, I'm going to fight Sasuke, he said simply but expected some kind of fuss from his older brother, but all he got was a raised eyebrow. I woke up and went into my mindscape to meditate on some things and I fell asleep under a tree but awoke when he and Sakura came into my room and he demanded that I fight him stating that he needed power and he could get it from me. I laughed a little at the end. I think he wants to use his Sharingan to copy my techniques and such but I doubt he would be able to use them also I won't be using them since it will be on the hospital roof and I'm just out of the hospital, I need to give my coils a chance to rest not to mention I have about half my chakra, he continued. Why are you telling me? I know you can make good decisions. Well I thought you would like to see the match since you hardly see him anymore because he refuses to be around you since you said no to training him? The match will be on the hospital roof in a minute once I get dressed from this hospital stuff. He finished getting a nod from Itachi before going to his room to get changed into his regular gear. He didn't know why but he liked having his t-shirt open without anything under it, it got a reaction from most women and provided a distraction to his opponent. Walking downstairs, he nodded to his brother before hugging his mother from behind and telling her bye like always, it still amazed him how much time Itachi spent here instead of the Uchiha compound but he was family. He shunchened to the roof of the hospital, odd time you shown up dobe. Sorry about that, I had to go home and get changed. I don't think you want to fight me in my hospital gown, now do you? He felt Itachi's chakra signature on a roof opposite watching them. Rules? Sasuke asked. Well I'm not long out of hospital and my body still feels rather raw so no ninjutsu or kenjutsu, taijutsu and genjutsu are fine. How does that sound? Fine dobe. He said, but on the inside he was seething, he wanted to copy his jutsu, little did he know Naruto always mastered a jutsu before attempting to learn another so they couldn't be copied. Kakashi landed next to Itachi and asked what was going on, my foolish little cousin wanted to fight Naruto to copy his jutsu but he is just out of hospital so he is still rather weak compared to his normal level. He asked me to watch the fight since I don't see Sasuke that much due to him refusing to be around me but I think it was more due to the fact that he was afraid of his body cutting out on him mid-fight and Sasuke using some stupid technique he copied and not stopping. Kakashi nodded and stood there watching Sasuke try to attack Naruto in Taijutsu. Naruto was much slower than what he was in the finals and in the invasion that followed but he was still faster than Sasuke. His seals and weights were still released from his fight in the invasion but he couldn't move anywhere near his max speed due to strain muscles so his taijutsu style wouldn't be near as effective. Sasuke was still getting beat around, sure he was getting a punch in here and there but he was losing even with his Sharingan, Naruto punched him in the face with a slightly enhanced fist full of chakra and sent him flying into a water container on the roof. Sasuke was not happy about this and began the hand seals necessary for Katan, Kokaki no Jutsu, but before he could finish Kakashi appeared grabbing his wrist. I thought you agreed no ninjutsu. H.N. Sasuke said before turning his attention back to a smiling Naruto. What are you smiling about Dobe? H.M.? Nothing just I won because you broke the rules, he continued smiling which infuriated Sasuke. You think you're so much better than me Dobe? You're not. 
I see the umbu that follow me as my menders because this village thinks I'm a flight risk and we both know you're a flight risk, so where are your menders? You will have some even if you don't see them. I'm loyal to the Hokage, I proved that multiple times in my younger days as I'm sure several umbu can vouch for me, I have no menders. Sure dobe. He said before disappearing in a Lee Shunshin. Naruto's smile turned into a frown. He was starting to put it together now, how he and Karinai were starting to fall apart, how she never wanted to spend time with him and how she didn't even call for him when he just finished killing an army of 1,000 to protect her. He hoped he was wrong and being paranoid, but his instincts wouldn't let him rest until he checked out the possibility of his thought process. The frown went unnoticed by everyone in the group except Kakashi and Itachi who both nodded to each other, Naruto disappeared in a flock of crows and moments later both Itachi and Kakashi disappeared as well going after a different objective. Kakashi went to give Sasuke a speech about hurting comrades and Itachi went to make sure his little brother did nothing stupid. Itachi arrived on a roof far away from his current position and stood behind his little brother as he relentlessly pounded away at the concrete wall in anger. What is it Itachi? Itachi stood there for a moment, he never called him Itachi unless he was about to do something others considered extremely stupid but he considered genius also when he was pissed off which was a hard thing to achieve but apparently his cousin managed it. Why are you so angry all of a sudden? Don't you see it? See what? Yorambu Itachi, look underneath the underneath and apply it to my relationship with one Karina Yuhi. Itachi did so and started seeing little bits here and there showing that she didn't really care for him, but he didn't understand what this meant, he wasn't a person who shown his feeling that much apart from with his family and he certainly wasn't a person to ask for advice on a woman's heart. So she doesn't love you? If that was it then I wouldn't be so angry but more annoyed with myself at this moment. Apply what you have just learned to what Sasuke said on the roof. You think you're so much better than me Dobe? You're not. I see the umbu that follow me as my menders because this village thinks I'm a flight risk and we both know you're a flight risk so where are your menders? You will have some even if you don't see them. He was thinking about it and then it clicked, oh shit. I see you understand, I let myself fall in love with a woman who was using me, I left myself vulnerable. After all I've done for this village Saratobi would do this to me. I am angry at myself for falling for it as well. I need proof before I confront either, he said, before looking at the sun in the sky, it was around 1.30 in the afternoon which was the Hokage's lunchtime. He smiled deviously before shunshining towards the ledge outside the Hokage's window and applying a genjutsu to everything in the office to make them think that no time in passing, he opened the window and walked towards a room full of records where he knew records and secrets were kept. The Yambu were meant to be enough to stop anyone from getting into this room except the Hokage but they had never seen a Genjutsu master like Naruto before and would probably never again and thus were unprepared for the surprise Genjutsu he used. He was still fuming but knew better than to let personal life interfere with the job at hand and started searching the files for the letter and for his name. He had hoped that there was no record for him but he would soon be proven wrong. Naruto Uzumaki Namake Zuchiha so it has my full name, huh? Fools. Hikari was watching from inside his mindscape, hoping beyond hope that what she thought wasn't true, it would break his heart. Name, Naruto Uzumaki Namake Zuchiha. Alias, Kanoa's Red Devil. Handler, Karina Yuhi. Mission Type, Seduction. Mission Parameters, Relationship Between One Naruto Uzumaki and Karina Yuhi. Reason for mission, loyalty of Jinshuriki. Mission, seduce the Jinshuriki to make sure he has ties within the village to provide mental stability and loyalty. Assigned by, Sarutobi Hiruzen. Mission status, ongoing. The entire village felt the KI released by Naruto, it felt like the one-tailed demon Shikaku had been released and they all shivered, civilians fell to the ground unconscious, Shinobi and Kunoichi fell to their knees and the Yumbu were shaking. As quick as the KI appeared it's disappeared, with only a few who knew what or who it was and those few who did felt sorry for whatever person pissed him off. He walked out of the room with his genjutsu and Sharingan active due to his rage, he almost lost control of his genjutsu but managed to control it. 
His anger building and only affecting his control of his chakra, he only had enough time to place one more genjutsu on the guards making them believe that the third Hokage called for an emergency council meeting of all clan heads and civilian council. They left immediately to inform all members of council, the Hokage was informed that the civilian council wanted a meeting. Within the hour all council chamber seats were full and all members were in attendance. The third Hokage sat in his seat looking weary as ever, he almost had a heart attack earlier when he felt the unknown K.I. in his village, he was sure to bring that up at a later point in the meeting. Who called this meeting? He asked getting confused looks from both councils. Hayashi Hyuga stood up, Hokage-sama, we were told to attend this emergency meeting by your umbu who said you called it. I was told by the umbu that someone in the civilian council called it. He said, getting a slightly bad feeling. I called it. Naruto said appearing from the shadows with his Sharingan active staring impassively towards the Hokage. Naruto, you can't call a meeting. Oh, but I can. No, you can't. I did though, did I not? The Hokage started to feel a vain throb in his head. Why? I found something out earlier, it has come to my attention that I have had for a better choice of words shall we say Minder's looking out for me to report to the Hokage about me for the past couple of years since I was eight years old. The Hokage was starting to feel slightly uncomfortable at the stare he was getting from Naruto. You have had no such thing. Think again, you decrepit old fool. He said rather harshly getting gasps from everyone in the room. They all knew how much Naruto cared for the third Hokage and even if some council members agreed with part of his statement they would never have the balls to say it to his face. In my hand he said showing a folder with a red stamp saying H.E.O. meaning it was for the Hokage's eyes only and no one else is a file of the mission assignment. Naruto how do you have that, he said not even trying to deny it now since he had the file. You don't even try to deny it? This could just be a blank folder? A ninja should look underneath the underneath, right? But I digress this is the actual folder and I'm going to read it out loud for everyone at which point you will know what you have lost. He cleared his throat and opened the folder, he began to read the start of it. Name, Naruto Uzumaki Namike Zuchiha. Alias, Kanoha's Red Okiba. Handler, Karina Yuhi. Mission Type, Seduction. Mission Parameters, Relationship Between One Naruto Uzumaki and Kurina Yuhi Reason for Mission, Loyalty of Jinshuriki Mission, Seduce the Jinshuriki to make sure he has ties within the village to provide mental stability and loyalty. Assigned by, Sarutobi Hiruzen Mission Status, Ongoing Everyone was staring wide-eyed at this revelation, not because of what the mission was, but because of the name, his full name. I am Naruto Uzumaki, Namike Uchiha. My mother was Kushina Uzumaki and Makoto Uchiha. My father was the fourth Hokage Minato Namikes. I am the Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Kitsune, and you fools have lost everything I could have given you. Did you know that the Namikes wasn't a clan until my father came to power as Hokage? They own several buildings that both civilian and shinobi live in? Not to mention that I have inherited the Uzumaki fortune and Whirlpool Island which is still to this day protected by barriers that only an Uzumaki can pass through? Did you also know that on this island is the most bountiful supply of rare minerals? I awakened my Sharingan at the age of five also awakening my Mangekyo Sharingan at the same time. He said pausing for dramatic effect whilst he sent more chakra to his eyes to display his Mangekyo. I have since gained the final level of the Mangekyo Sharingan and am the only one who can pass the Sharingan onto my children? Itachi is unfortunately sterile and can't have any kids, Sasuke is most likely interested in men and will defect in the future to anyone who will offer him power and then you have me, I will never and I mean never love someone from the village again. My Sharingan will die with me. Everyone was wide-eyed at what he finished saying. Here was the son of the fourth Hokage and Saratobi was stupid enough to assign a seduction mission against him? He was known as the professor he should have known what would happen to him if the mission failed like it was right now. Now we have that out the way, the civilian council members that live in buildings owned by my family will have the rent tripled as recompense for when I was younger, I survived for five years with you tripling the price of my food, clothes and other basic necessities and so will you. 
I want to say one more thing before I leave on my training trip for two and a half years with Jiraiya. I care not for this village anymore, I care for only my family, and if anyone hurts them I will tear them apart, as long as this village is my family's home it shall be mine but the moment they die then I shall leave. Earlier in the week when I departed the army that approached I did not for only the village, their faces haunt me at night because of my Sharingan active yet I accept this because I did it for my family. This village can burn to ashes for all I care. Announce to the village who and what I am Saratobi and by the time I get back from my training trip I expect there to be a Godem Hokagi otherwise I will go to the fire daimyo seeking compensation for what you and this village has done to me over the years. Also that K.I. earlier was me when I found out what you had done. With that he shunchened home and Itachi stood calmly and said well you fucked up my brother Saratobi I hope you realize that he was restraining himself greatly from killing you. Yes I do. And I hope you also realize he is deadly serious about what he said about his family, my brother never lies when it comes to family. A stupid civilian stood up, does that mean Sasuke is the demon's brother? And we should force him into the CRA, he said, getting shots of agreement from the other civilians and a round of facepalms from the Shinobi Council. No Sasuke is our cousin, he was adopted by Kasen when her sister died in the Kyuubi attack, we've always treated him like a brother so he never knew, but now I suppose I will have to tell him also, I take it that it is civilians like you who will try to force him into the CRA? I've trained him since he was five and can tell you now he has pretty much surpassed me in most areas so good luck. With that he shunchened home to speak with his mother. Naruto arrived home to tell his mother about his training trip and tried his best to hide his anger. Kasan, I'm going on a training trip with Arosenin, sorry for short notice. He said hoping she wouldn't ask how long for. Okay Sochi, but how long are you going away for? He stopped mid-step and sighed. Two and a half years to get ready to fight S-Clan criminals that want to kill me and extract the Kyuubi, according to Arosenin. He said with a slightly sad voice. Okay, remember to write and be careful, but most importantly, don't turn into a pervert. She said with a small smile, hi Kasan. He left to the library before sealing several high-class techniques and the Horatian scroll into a blood seal on his wrist allowing him to study when he was away, he grabbed a pre-packed bag of clothes and equipment something he had picked up from his older brother's umbu duties, always be ready. Shunshining to the front gate and leaving a note in his wake to his older brother he met up with his perverted godfather, he could sense that his godfather knew something was wrong but waved it off. Let's go Arosenin, I have two and a half years away from this village and my family although the former I don't mind that much and I'm going to use them to train properly, he said getting a raised eyebrow from his godfather being nodding. First stop would be Suna, but they are kind of scared of you right now so we will go there at a later date so first stop will be Taki to check on my spy network and work on your ninjutsu and chakra control, later in the year we will work on kenjutsu but all the while you will be working on your physical exercise with weights and seals. At some point we will work with the toads and maybe teach you a little bit about senjutsu chakra and how to mold it but that won't be until near the end he said getting a nod from his young apprentice before leaving not noticing the ruckus that was happening in the village from Naruto's little speech. The day was young, the sun was rising and the birds were chirping. We find the road to Kanoa's northern gates occupied by four people, a six feet four blonde male with long blonde hair tied in a ponytail down his back a red and black jacket with the kanji for toad sage on the back and the headband with spikes and the kanji for oil on his forehead. The next person was a 5 feet 9 tall blonde woman with long blonde hair wrapped in bandages down her back wearing a purple schemed outfit missing the midsection. She had a sizable C-cup bust and a smile that made her look like an angel. In the woman's arms was a 2-year-old toddler. She had two whisker marks on either side of her face with sun-kissed blonde hair at shoulder length and bright blue eyes. All in all she was a two-year-old female version of Naruto. The last man was the same height as the first, but with pure white hair, he wore similar clothes to the first and had the same headband as him. These people were Naruto and soon-to-be Yujito Achiha Namakes, Jiraiya the Gallant and the daughter of Naruto and Yujito, Kushina, named after her grandmother Kushina Namakes. The gate guards were doing nothing as per usual when the group of four just walked past them. They both held their mouths open as they saw the legendary Genin walk through the gates to his hometown. Kotetsu looked to his partner in crime with a small grin. Things are going to get interesting around here now don't you think? Sure do. 
Wonder what will happen when those two meet. A shiver went up both men's spines, it was bound to be explosive and not very good for one side of the conversation. Back with the group Naruto had his three tomoed Sharingan active to remember all the small details of his first time back in Kanoa since that faithful night almost five and a half years ago when he was betrayed by his dearest friend, he sighed to himself, he was starting to get depressed with this place and then he felt a hand on his shoulder. He looked back to see his girlfriend Yujido and his darling daughter in her arms giggling away trying to reach out and grab a butterfly that just went past. Stop going Uchiha on me. I can't handle your depressed ass. She said in a tone that clearly held a lot of mirth, she always had a way to cheer him up, it was uncanny. Fine, Kushina-chan, want to go meet Bachan? What about Jiraji-san, he said whilst looking at Kushina. Both parents smiled when she stopped what she was doing and shouted ya, which was her best attempt at saying yes to date. All right then, let's go. Before he could even start to move in the direction of his house a voice called out in an attempt to rain on his parade. Not now Naruto, we have to speak with whoever the Hokage is. Not today sensei, I don't want to return to that building today how about tomorrow after breakfast, my treat, just drop by the house eh? Fine you can go, I will speak with the Hokage about it and we will see you tomorrow. Naruto stood straight with a mock salute before grabbing his daughter and girlfriend and shunshining towards a place he hadn't been in such a long time, home. Arriving outside his home wanting to surprise his brother and mother he smiled, he missed this place. It was his only sanctuary when he was younger and training, his peace and quiet, his perfection. Sure he had the spot on top of his father's head but that could be interrupted at any time by ninjas such as ANBU operatives in search of him. Placing his hand atop the lock and bleeding onto it he heard a slight clicking sound signifying the gate had been opened, he carefully opened the gate and his eyes roamed his home in suspense hoping that it was still the saved bit of heaven he remembered. His eyes fell onto the front garden, oh how he remembered the days after the Uchiha massacre when his mother wouldn't leave the house and when she finally did she left for gardening, Naruto himself had no issues with this. He could tell that she needed a way to cope with what was happening and this was it so he left her to it and the garden became beautiful. He couldn't take it any longer and his ran inside his home, it all looked the same, Kachan, I'm home. He shouted hoping she was at home, his hopes were well founded when he heard loud footsteps indicating running above him showing that she was upstairs. She hadn't aged at all Naruto thought as she came running in the kitchen still looking like she was 20 when she was closer to 35. He couldn't help but smile when he saw her. She couldn't believe it, her baby boy was standing in front of her in the kitchen smiling at him, there was a blonde woman and baby beside him but that was for later for now she was just going to hug her son for life and hoped he would never leave again. What time do you call this young man? Two and a half years late? He said shrinking down into himself which Yujito found amusing since she knew how strong he was. Damn right. If I hadn't missed you so much I would spank you. Deciding to change the subject before it became uncomfortable Naruto had a bright idea, Hey Kachan, did you know you're a grandmother now? What? Yep, meet my daughter and your granddaughter Kushina Uchiha Namikes. It was then at that moment in time that she finally paid close attention to the people in the room, the little girl in the woman's arms had to be about two years old and had whisker marks on her face like her father. She stopped all her scolding and started walking towards an uncomfortable Yujito before rushing her and grabbing the little girl trying to squeeze her to death via hug. Ka-chan, I think she needs to breath. Makoto noticed that the girl was starting to go blue and led her to, she fell onto the floor on her feet and stood for a few seconds before falling backwards on her bottom and smiling at her grandmother. Before you go hugging her to death again, this is Yujido, she is the mother of Kushina and will be my wife eventually, I love her with all my heart and will do anything to protect her. He said smiling as he hugged a blushing Yujido to his chest. Makoto obviously odd at the sight but inside she was incredibly happy that her son had found love, she like everyone else had heard about Kurinai's mission to seduce him and thought that he would never find love in the village, apparently she was right considering Yujito had a scratched headband on. Where's Tachi NII? He rejoined ANBU whilst you were training because he was bored. Should have just taken a genin team. 
That's what I said, but apparently the thrill of battle thing you had was building up and with A and B U he could help the village and battle tough opponents. I bet he's gotten really strong. Ye, he was wanting a spar with you when you got back so he wanted to improve since he had no doubt that you surpassed him a while ago. Does the village know about you yet Kachan? Yes, they all had mixed reactions. Some wanted to hurt me because my son was the demon brat she said while sensing her son let out an overwhelming chaos that could bring most jonin to their knees if it was aimed at them, luckily it wasn't aimed at anyone in particularly so she just smiled, his son was still incredibly overprotective of people he loved and family. Others thanked me because of what you did just before you disappeared in the invasion, they tried to force me into the CRA but I told them that if you found out along with Itachi then they would have a serious situation on their hands and the entire council don't want a repeat of last time. She finished whilst taking a breath and watching Naruto smirk. What happened to the old man? He stepped down after sending a team after Tsunade to become the fifth Hokage. How about you let your son treat you, his daughter and his fiancé to some ice cream in town? It's a hot day and we can relax. She nodded, it was just starting the day and incredibly hot already and was bound to become even hotter later on. Her son cheers whilst picking Kushina up and placing her on his shoulders whilst she was all the time giggling at the attention, he looked to his mother and held out his hand whilst he did the same with Yujido, Kushina was holding his hair for dear life as per usual and they all shunchened the acros to the center of town in an alleyway. To the dango shop. He said whilst Yujito was shaking her head at his antics, she could never get entirely used to them due to his unpredictability, she ended up just going with the flow. He suddenly stopped before leaving the ally and looked over to his mother, one second Kachan. He said before going through some hand seals and saying lowly Kuchios no jutsu, summoning jutsu, smoke appeared and through the smoke you could see a human figure around 20 years of age with the blood red hair that most the Uzumaki clan were born with. About time Naruto, I was wondering when you were going to summon me. She said annoyed at being locked up again after so long. Sorry Hikari-chan, had to get into Kanoha and you would have been an incredible red flag. She nodded understandingly whilst Makoto watched in amazement, who are you? Everyone looked towards Makoto, uh, allow me to introduce you to her Kachan, this is Hikari, or better known as the Kyubi. Makoto just nodded, she had long been informed of Kyuubi's role as the puppet in the attack nearly 17 years ago so she didn't care that much and her son seemed to trust her a lot which also helped. Grabbing Yujido's hand and walking with the group they started to head towards the dango shop, people were beginning to notice Naruto now and were greeting him with Achihasama and a bow. It sickened him tremendously. Not even five and a half years ago they scorned him and tried to abuse him both physically and emotionally because he was a Jinchuriki and then all of a sudden he had the Sharingan so he must be treated with respect, it was the height of hypocrisy to him. People were staring at the child on his head and the woman he had his left hand entwined to and were starting to get suspicious, she had a scratched Kumo headband on and people were getting nervous because of it but no one shinobi or civilian alike dared to move against her because she was with Naruto and held hands with him. The female civilian and most of the female shinobi population all odd at the scene as Naruto carried the little girl on his shoulders and constantly watched her in case something happened as the little girl was looking at everything excitedly. Arriving at the dango shop, the waiter lead them all to a booth at the back of the restaurant away from the crowd so that they could eat in peace, none of them noticed Karina Yuhi and the three other ice queens sitting on the opposite side of the restaurant eating. Said ice queens were now in conversation about Naruto since he had just entered. Maybe you should apologize to him, Karinai? Anko asked, she had seen what he had done for the village and was proud to have been a shinobi at that point in time watching him fight. Asterisk snored asterisk like he would accept it. Karinai snorted uncharacteristically. I think he would, he seems quite relaxed with the two blondes, the mysterious redhead and his mother. Yuga replied calmly, she had been one of his guards growing up and was happy with how he turned out but when she learned of Karinai's betrayal she refused to speak with her for weeks afterwards, she considered Naruto like a little brother just like the rest of her squad and his protectors did. Fine, I will go apologize. She finally said although hesitantly, it was understandable she broke the man's heart when he was younger and was not looking forward to his reaction. Yugao nodded accepting this as she watched her walk over to the table. 
Naruto and his family were all laughing at some of the stories Makoto was telling of what happened when they were away during the trip when they all noticed Karinai walking over albeit nervously, Yujido knew who this was due to the description that Naruto gave her and held his hand tightly whilst smiling. She was the one to win his heart but she was second best in the race and this woman squandered it, for that she disliked the woman greatly. Naruto sighed and looked up, Karinai. Naruto. You're looking good. He said awkwardly not really understanding what to say at this point in time. Thank you, I want to. She stopped when he raised his hand. Listen, it was a mission and although I hate the fact that it was given, I will not hate you for it, but what I will hate you for is if you please don't leave me alone. I am having family time for the first time after five and a half years, I think I deserve it. He finished, she nodded, and left him alone whilst he let out a sigh of annoyance. Well done Sochi, it takes a lot to be the bigger man. His mother said whilst the others agreed. Thanks, let's just carry on and have some fun. He said with a small smile, he had missed everything about this and if he didn't fall in love and had Kushin and not been born he would have been sure he would have seen it as a wasted trip. They continued for another half hour just sharing stories when his mother asked how he and Yujido met, he was about to answer when a shadow was looming over him, he ignored it and started his story but before he could really get into it, the sound of a throat clearing in the background was heard. He grunted in annoyance and turned around to face it whilst Makoto was thinking that the grunt must be hereditary since all Uchiha males seem to grunt when annoyed. Yes? You were meant to report in. That can wait till tomorrow. No it really can't. Yes it can. No it can't you will come with me now and report it. Nope, tomorrow, I'm enjoying family time which you are interrupting. He said starting to get annoyed with the fact that this person was still here. They were starting to draw a crowd now, apparently this woman was famous. Do you know who I am? No. Well let me tell you, I am. She stopped when he interrupted her. Listen, if you are searching for me and considering I had a genjutsu over the table to make people not notice us then that means you have kage level chakra reserves, but you also fit the description of this Tsunade person that Sensei mentioned a lot. Going by this I would presume you are the Hokage that replaced the old man after his tremendous fuck up before I left. Now I presume proper introductions are in order, how about you go first? He said with a disarming smile that made women's heart melt. Tsunade was beginning to lose her temper with this blonde brat in front of her and the ever-growing vein in her forehead was proof of that. I am Tsunade Senju of the Senju clan and 5th Hokage of the Leaf Village. She said in a proud voice. Naruto smiled a bit and nodded in understanding, fair enough Tsunade Senju of the Senju clan, I am Naruto Uchiha of the Uchiha clan. He said whilst activating his Sharingan before morphing it into the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. There was a tense silence for a minute or two before Naruto continued, Now let me explain something to you, I don't care who you are or what position you hold, it is all meaningless to me Miss Senju. But and this is a big bud, you are interrupting my family time with my daughter, fiancé, mother and close family friend that I consider a sister in all but blood and if you don't stop interrupting until tomorrow when me and Jiraiya will come by your office and report then I will activate Susanoo and throw you from here to moon country for interrupting something that I haven't had the chance to do for five and a half years. He said in a monotone voice that many cringed at whilst the vein in Tsunade's forehead grew to almost breaking point. Listen here brat. She said whilst he whispered something to Yujito who nodded and placed her hands over Kushina's ears before Naruto unleashed a god-awful killing intent and said in a dangerous voice with his eternal Mangekyo Sharingan ablaze, am I going to have to throw a bitch? She said nothing while sweating under the K.I., you can't stand the killing intent yet you were happy to throw yours around earlier, I will be at your office for 9am tomorrow with Jiraiya, Yujito and Kushina now leave us. He said before many shunshins were heard and they were suddenly left alone again. That is a dangerous game you played Sochi. Makoto said whilst being slightly impressed at how much her son had grown. I haven't seen you in five and a half years, no one is going to interrupt us again. He said with a smile. She nodded and they all continued, Naruto eventually asked why Sasuke left which she was surprised to know he knew about. 
Makoto sighed for what seemed like the 100th time in the past day. Apparently her son made things troublesome around Kanoma, he left about a month after you. He wasn't happy about all the positive attention you were getting even when you weren't here and he heard that you were going to train with a San Nin, so he thought he would do the same. Unfortunately he killed two Chunin guards at the gates at the time of his escape. A team was sent to retrieve him, but they left too late and he arrived in Rice Country to Orochimaru. Morochimaru-chan has already made it to the top position in my shit list even about the Akatsuki because the fool tried to brand both Yujito and Kushina with the curse seal, I saved them before he had the chance but I may or may not have totally obliterated his base at the same time as wounding him. That team is going to die, slowly and painfully but I didn't see Sasuke so he must have been at another base at the time, if I saw him then I would have beat him up and brought him back to Kanoa. He finished. She nodded and understood, nobody messed with his family, that was his number one rule and Orochimaru broke it. Enough of this depressing story, we've been here for around 4 hours now just catching up and it's about 3 in the afternoon, we need to get stuff for Kushinichan like a crib, food, diapers and whatever else we need. He said and stood up whilst paying the bill. Kushina stumbled over to him and held his hand, he looked down to see a small Kushina smiling up at him, she had started to learn to walk not that long ago and was quite good for her age. Kushina held her other hand for Yujito to grab and she was all too happy to oblige. They left with Kushina walking slowly in between them swinging every third step to catch up. Many onlookers were smiling at the display of affection. It took the rest of the day for Naruto and the others to buy and put together and it was starting to get dark so they made dinner and went to bed, both Naruto and Yujito were rudely awoken by a toad using a low-level sway tenjutsu on them. Arosenin, how many times have I told you not to do that? I thought we got you out of this Arosenin crap kid? Well it's back to Arosenin when you wake me up at 5 in the morning using a sway tenjutsu, he moaned. Whatever, so I heard you met Tsunade yesterday? What did you describe her as, a spitfire was it? That doesn't do justice to her temper. Tell me about it. He drawled. Anyway, time to get up, breakfast to have, meeting to meet and of course my personal favorite, there is research to be searched. He grinned at the end. Remember what I said about peeking on me and Yujido sensei it will not end well for you he said seriously. Jiraiya nodded knowing from experience that Yujito was brutal on pervs peeping on her, she only let Naruto do that. He sighed, fine, let's go have breakfast. Naruto nodded before walking downstairs in only pajama bottoms with no top leaving Yujito to wake up and get their daughter ready whilst he went to make breakfast for the family. Twenty minutes later and Makoto came down dressed for the day having heard the disturbance earlier waking her up, Seeing the man her son labeled as Erosenin before he she smiled and thanked him for taking care of her son. Speaking of whom had just finished making everyone breakfast when Yujido came down carrying a still half-asleep Kushina, she didn't appear to be a morning person and wanted to go back to bed. Yujito gave Naruto a kiss on the cheek before sitting beside him and started to eat her breakfast but not before placing Kushina in a high chair. Naruto smiled, he loved this feeling of having a family and a daughter and it filled the void that formed when he first started training trying to forget about Karinai. Two hours later, dishes were done and everyone had ate, Naruto got dressed and begun his morning routine, he long since maxed out his chakra weights at 230 kilograms because of his advanced healing factor and although they provided a big speed increase he often felt that he hadn't gotten the full effect of his weight training. Finishing with a nice shower he proceeded to get dressed for the day in his usual gear and placed a few scrolls in his pouch before going to get Yujito and Kushina to take to the Hokage's office to most likely get shouted at by said Hokage for threatening her yesterday. He cringed, he did not like the way that the day was looking so far. Placing Kushina on his shoulders again and leaning over to give Yujito a kiss on the lips like he usually does in the morning both stopped when they heard giggling and the sounds of pencil writing on a notepad which quickly stopped when a slapping sound was heard when Makoto's hand hit Jiraiya's face. Smiling to each other and walking out with hands intertwined leaving a red-faced Jiraiya behind they started walking through the streets to the tower confident that Jiraiya would catch up which he did by the time that they were in the town center. Reaching the office just after 9 they all walked in and passed the secretary which already had orders surrounding the group, walking into the office to look at an angry Tsunade, in my defense, it was Sensei's fault. 
Naruto said flatly trying to shift the blame. He didn't even notice the elders in the room. Not caring, we will have words later, but for now we have a council meeting to attend. She said not at all sounding interested, Naruto groaned and would have thrown his head back if it didn't mean that his daughter would fall on the floor. He nodded and followed on as Tsunade and the elders lead the group into the council chambers. All chatter stopped upon his entry which annoyed him, he didn't like having this special treatment but if it meant a better environment for his daughter to grow up and live in then he would bear it. Order, order Tsunade said banging a gavel like object. We are here today because one of our own has returned albeit later than expected, she said whilst glaring at a certain white-haired toad sage. We all have some questions, but first who is the blonde woman and child next to you? My fiancé and daughter. He said flatly causing uproar in the chambers. What do you mean fiancé and daughter? You swore that you wouldn't get married last time you were in the chambers in front of us. A pink-haired civilian screeched at having all her plans ruined. I said I wouldn't marry anyone from this village, she is clearly not from this village. He said monotonously whilst pointing to her scratched Kumo headband. Who is she? Another councilman asked. Yuji Doni, former Jonin of Kumo Bakure, but defected when they sold her out leaving her for dead. Sold out how? That is not your concern. He replied getting raised eyebrows from several people, including some shinobi council members. I beg to differ boy, a rather arrogant council member, stated. Naruto stood impassively staring at the member before smirking. What business would a civilian like you have with a shinobi like me and Yujido here? He's right, this is clearly a shinobi matter. It's logical to assume that they do not wish to explain due to some of the civilians' past experiences with secrets. One Shibi Aburaim explained. All shinobi in the room nodded in acceptance, fine then who is the girl? My daughter, Kushina Uchiha Namikaze, when she is old enough I will let her chose if she wants either name or both. He said whilst looking at a certain Hyuga whose Byakugan was active. Hayashi, stop looking at my daughter with your Byakugan, that is an invasion of privacy if I've ever seen one. Everyone looked to Hayashi, who quickly deactivated his bloodline. The girl's chakra levels are low genin level already. He said, odd and wondering what kind of beast the couple had as a daughter. Yes, I had to seal off her bloodline for the time being, she was born with so much chakra that it was active at birth hence it had to be sealed until she learned to control chakra. He said, leaving the council stunned. We must put her and you in the CRA. Several civilians all but screamed. Um, no. He said just completely ignoring them. Eventually, it got too much for him to ignore, and he unleashed the same level of killer intent that he aimed at Tsunade yesterday, my daughter and my family are off limits, this is the last warning. He said in a dangerous tone. One of the civilians thought they would try and get one over on him, since he clearly was winning in the political arena. I assume your fiancé is here to claim asylum. He said to which Naruto nodded. We can't just let any missing mean into Kanoha, you must understand. Naruto snorted, the request is, but a formality, she has the backing of the Uchiha and Namakase clans and therefore cannot be denied. He said whilst most shinobi nodded, Naruto finally looked around the room, but his brother wasn't there, he must have been on mission he concluded and asked as such. Yes, but they are for private ears. Tsunade interrupted clearly, not wanting to hear the civilians go on about his clan's restoration. She may not like the gaki, but he sure knew how to handle the council. Actually, one more question that can be voiced to the council. Why were you two and half years late in returning? She said, and several heads perked up. That was my bad. Me and Yujido found out she was pregnant and went to a Mumaya Boku where I trained and looked after her. It was a pain going down to buy food and stuff then being reverse summoned again, but it was worth it. I'm happy we left before we started feeding Kushin a solid food otherwise Ma and Pa would have tried to feed her fly soup. He said with a shiver getting sympathetic nods from the shinobi. Since you've been away for five and a half years you will need to have a match against someone to show your skill level. She said getting a nod from Naruto to continue. Your old sensei Kakashi seemed rather eager, but I have foregone that arrangement because Saratobi sensei called in a favor, apparently he wants to fight you. 
Tsunade said getting the attention of almost everyone, after all the fabled god of shinobi as he was called didn't just want to fight anyone even in his old age he could still kill most people in the village. Naruto paused for a minute before grinning like a madman and starting to laugh to himself before it echoed through the chambers, I'll be waiting at your office Tsunade. He said getting a grumble from said blonde about gakis and respect. Naruto was calmly waiting inside the Hokage's office with the old Hokage's guards all saying hello to the young man that they used to protect and guard as a little brother. Yuko apparently had gotten married in the aftermath of the Suna slash Oto invasion, both her and her fiancé Hayate felt that life was too short because of his brush with death and her ANBU career, he made a mental note to buy them some flowers later and apologize for being late to her wedding. She wasn't currently present in the office of the Hokage due to falling pregnant a month beforehand and being placed on the off-duty list until her child was born. Naruto himself was ecstatic to hear the good news, he enjoyed fatherhood and couldn't wait until she could enjoy being a mother. Itachi was currently out on mission with his new ANBU squad after being reassigned from the Hokage's protection detail to fieldwork because Kanoha was in need of people with his skills, according to Ganma the council had tried on several occasions to get him to take a genin team in hopes of passing down jutsu that were taught to him and stolen from several people including himself. Kakashi was on the window ledge reading his book just listening with a smile on his face, he had missed Naruto. He was his sensei's son and a little brother to him, he was family and family was something he missed after his father's death and his adoptive father's death. His thoughts were interrupted when the Hokage stormed into the office fuming mad thus making him grin more. I hope you know the shitstorm you just caused for me brat. I made the council know their place thus giving you more power that you should have already had and at the same time warned them off my family? Yes I know and I would do it again. He said calmly whilst taking Kushina from Yujito and bouncing her on his knee. The Hokage and her assistant were both struggling to note scream about how cute she was so she decided to change the subject. Sensei is waiting at training ground 7 for us. I will be there soon, I just need to make a quick stop. He said seriously. Fine brat, she said and she disappeared in a shunshin towards the training ground. Come Yujito-chan, Kushina-chan and Kai-chan, we need to make a quick stop at a friend's house before we make our way to the training grounds. Kakashi feel free to turn up at the training grounds to watch. He finished confusing most people whilst the copy ninja smiled and opened the window to give a nod of affirmation before catching a book that was thrown at him. Sensei's latest, enjoy. He spoke before he turned round and grabbed his family disappearing in a red flash of light and reappearing at his house. We will pick you up in 10 to 15 minutes Kachan. He said to which he got a nod and a smile from his mother. Yujito held his outstretched arm and they disappeared in a flock of crows showing an old classic from when he was younger. They both arrived at the Yamanaka flower shop to see Inoichi, the old clan head of the Yamanaka clan, his daughter took over when she turned 16 so he could retire and drink away his life with his friends. Hey Inoichi, he smiled to the older man, whilst he may not have trusted him when he was younger and still didn't to a degree the man had never done anything to him or his family and that in itself made him smile. Oh Naruto, you're back. How was your trip? And who is this lovely young lady and little girl? The trip was great, I learned so much and came back with much more. As for everything else you should wait till Eno gets home from the meeting, it was all explained in there and I'm in a hurry, sorry. He apologized. Fine, well what is it you need then? If I remember right before I left you had a jutsu that your family used in this flower shop to change the color of plants without dyeing them? He asked. Yes, we still use it today, it's quick and cost efficient. He responded. Good, I need 12 purple roses please also whilst we are at it could you get me one white rose and two red roses all separately packed of course. Inoichi nodded and went into the back to prepare the order whilst leaving the couple at the front. What are the flowers for? she asked. The twelve roses are for Yuga as a congratulations for her marriage that I missed and also for her upcoming child, the two red ones are for Kachan and two sans gravestones whilst the white one is for you since I know you like them he smiled at her and she blushed a little, he was ever the romantic with her. Ah, thank you Naruto Kuen. She hugged him and kissed him on the lips whilst keeping a tight hold on her daughter whom Naruto passed to her earlier. 
he nodded in response. We spoke when we were away about who the godparents for our child should be if something were to happen to either of us and you said that I could pick them because you didn't know anyone. I wanted you got as her godmother since she helped raise and train me when I was younger with the rest of her squad and Kakashi as her godfather if that is alright with you? He asked hopefully. She smiled brightly, she was wondering who he would pick and the sword mistress and copy ninja of Kanoa were great choices to raise and train her should something happen to them both. Of course. She said alleviating his fears. Inoichi came back with a bouquet of purple flowers in his right hand and a three small packages in a bag on his left hand which Naruto gladly paid for before saying goodbye and taking his family to the house that Hei had owned since Yuga would have moved in with him before their marriage. It was a modest two-story house with a basement and a nice garden with some woods surrounding it, for bedrooms inside with all that was needed for an upcoming family that both Yuga and Hei had wanted. Knocking on the door and waiting for someone to answer he heard two sets of footsteps, if he remembered right then Hei had, had a type of chakra disease from when he was younger that affected his lungs hence the cough, he would have to fix that at some point. He wondered why Sonate hadn't fixed it yet, she was a world-renowned Mednin. He had several seals that he created in his time away and on an Boku that were meant for healing and he was sure that one of them could fix it. The door opened and a man and women appeared, the latter looking slightly pregnant with a little bump already beginning to show, he smiled and instantly hugged her carefully not to hurt the baby or damage the flowers. You gonna, I missed you so much. He said smiling. Who are you? She asked slightly scared due to her condition. Both Heiate and Yujito were watching with amusement since Heiate recognized the blonde straight away. Even though she saw him yesterday in the dango shop she failed to recognize him close up with different clothes. Oh you hurt me so Yugane, what other blonde gaki with the Sharingan did you help train with his chakra sabers when he was young? It took a moment to click before, Naruto. She shouted and hugged him back as if he was going to disappear, don't you ever go away for so long again without writing or visiting, we didn't know if you died or anything and it scared us, she said slightly angry at the end. Sorry Nechan, can we come in? To which she responded by dragging him to the couch in the living room and telling him not to move, shortly after Yujito and Kushina followed and Yugo brought some tea for them. So not that I'm complaining, but what do I owe the visit Naruto? While I was speaking to Ganma to catch up and stuff he mentioned you were married which I totally missed and would have loved to be there for by the way but also you have a kid on the way. Congratulations he said whilst handing her flowers, I knew purple was your favorite color so I got them in the exact color just for you he said smiling. She went and placed them in a vase of water and came back, they are beautiful Naruto, thank you for them and we understand why you missed our wedding. She said with Hei 8 nodding in the background, he still felt like he owed a debt to Naruto for saving his life when he was younger. Now who's this young woman and the chibi? The woman is my fiancé Yuji Doni, ex-cloud Jonin and Jinshuriki of Nibi. He said allowing for a dramatic pause whilst taking Kushina into his lap, this chibi as you called her is our daughter, Kushina Achiha Namikaze. He finished getting looks of surprise from both Heiate and Yugo. She had seen the little girl with them yesterday but hadn't been introduced yet and to find out she was his daughter was insane. She immediately clomped the poor girl screaming about how cute she was, when she got off her Naruto continued like it never happened, this brings me to my second reason for this visit, Yujido doesn't know anyone from Kanoa and was betrayed by Kumo so if we were both to die then our daughter would be an orphan of the state like I was until 5, I don't want that at all so I was hoping that you would do me the honor of being her godmother, he finished with a bright smile. Yugo just sat there stunned whilst Hei 8 smiled, he would take care of their daughter if anything happened to them simply because he owed Naruto for saving his life and being there for Yugo, but now she would also. Of course you idiot. You don't even have to ask. She smiled, good then how about you come over sometime to get to know her, Hey, 8 can come as well obviously also Hey, 8 sit down and lift your shirt for me. He said in a commanding tone. Hei did what he asked but wondered why, he felt Naruto placing a seal that he retrieved out of his pouch on his chest and using the ram seal to place chakra through it. Hold on a minute please. He nodded and two minutes later Naruto smiled. Your disease is a chakra based one correct? Yeah that's all the medics could tell me. 
The seal I just placed on you was a special one that I designed as part of a medic batch to get my seal mastery from Sensei whilst I was living on an Imayaboku with the toads, it is designed to provide an in-depth analysis of any disease or anything wrong with the body. It just finished analyzing your disease so let's see what it has to say. He said before ripping the tag off his chest and taking a few chest hairs with it. The ink on the paper slowly changed to text. Hmm interesting, it isn't your fault for having this disease. According to this it was injected via animal bite when you were younger, the medics probably thought that it was hereditary and just beginning in you so they were misdiagnosing you. Tsunade should have noticed that if she wasn't drinking so much. The disease itself has no name that I am aware of but originates deep in the land of swamps, it died off some time ago because no cure was found and is terminal, no human has ever had it which is probably why you are still alive because your immune system is working overdrive and is more advanced than a civilian's and animal's own immune system. I'd say you have another 10 years max before you die very painfully in the end. He finished delivering the sad news Yugo looked horrified and placed her hands over her stomach whilst Hei 8 and Yujido both took it with a pinch of salt sensing him, but somewhere soon. But, I may be able to cure you or prolong your life. I designed several other seals over my time away and one of them basically transferred my chakra to another person over a set period of time with seals. Normally that would give a person chakra poisoning due to the chakra in the seal trying to rewrite a person's chakra presence, but with me since I am the Kyubi Jinchuriki and my chakra is also Parduzumaki it comes with an advanced healing rate that I can pass on to someone else temporarily via the seal. In other words, he finished whilst taking another seal out of his back pouch, where this seal starting from tomorrow for one month, don't take it off ever and do no work that involves chakra and by the end of the month your disease should be gone, I will run the test again to make sure but it will either save your life or prolong it to old age, old enough to see your family grow with you. He finished as a smile crossed both Yugao and Hayate's faces. Hayate leaned over to Yugao's ear and whispered something to her and she smiled brightly even more so than before and nodded, Naruto. Hayate said, catching his attention. A slash n. Hey, eight coughs like a bitch still. I know you have a lot on with raising your own child and the council, but you have done so much for both me and Hugo. I am alive today and will be in the future to see my family grow because of you. I owe you my life twice over. You are strong and it would be to my and Hugo's greatest pleasure if you would accept being our unborn child's godfather. He finished coughing at the end and taking a breath of air. Naruto smiled, he didn't want anything for helping them both, but he would love to be there for their family in the future and readily agreed, I hate to cut this short, but I have a match with Sandame Wakage now, would you two like to come and watch? They both nodded and he took everyone's hand and disappeared in a flash of red to his home, he really needed to place the seals for his father's move down already because this was annoying. Kaasan, we're back. Makoto came out of the kitchen and nodded, then greeted both Yugao and Hei 8, he gave Kushina over to his mother whilst giving Yujito the flowers from earlier. Wait here for a minute, I'm going to change. They all nodded wondering why he was going to change. He came down five minutes later looking like a ghost. Over the years his hair changed to a darker yellow, even more so than his father's own shade of yellow. He had cut off the ponytail with a wind-enhanced ease, so his hair was a tiny bit longer than his father's, but the bangs went down half his face instead of the full length hanging over his forehead protector. He was wearing baggy trousers that were a cross between white and beige giving a silky look to them. His ankles were taped off up to his trousers whilst he was wearing a black hoodie that was zipped up. Over his hoodie was an open jacket that looked like a remnants of a time long forgotten by the people hidden in the leaf village. An orange open jacket with black flames at the bottom, the outlining thread that went round the entire jacket was blood red and on the back was kanji for toad sage. The arms of the jacket stopped just above his elbows and each side of the jacket was held together by a red thread coming across his chest. On his right thigh he had a kunai pouch. Images 17 slash content slash output slash 000 slash 000 slash 000 slash 5b8 slash 47255690 underscore. On each arm at just below the elbow and wrist were a green band like his father's blue ones that hold the fabric in place. He was wearing his necklace that he got from his mother for his birthday when he was younger. Let's get going. They all nodded dumbly and grabbed onto him not knowing what to say in the current situation. They disappeared in a flock of crows and reappeared at training ground 7. Sorry I'm late. 
I got lost on the road to life. He said whilst directing his family and loved ones over to the spectator's bit. Say. Son, sensei. He heard Kakashi stutter out. Nope, but try again? Naruto. You look exactly like your father, but with a different color scheme. I kind of noticed and figured it was time for a haircut, although the jutsu for my hair won't be nearly as effective with hair this length, but I have plenty others. He was interrupted by a clearing of the throat and looked over to Tsunade, unlike yesterday, and said what? We are here to see you fight not babble about your choice of clothes. She said with a tick mark, I really hope Kushina doesn't grow to be as annoying as you are at time Tsunade. He said flatly whilst everyone there except Kushina and Yujido choked, he had balls of steel. He looked back over to the tree line to see his sensei laughing up a storm underneath a tree whilst Tsunade's vein throbbed about to explode. Listen here yo. So who am I fighting again? He said interrupting her to see how she like it, the vein throbbed even harder. That would be me Naruto Kuen. A voice said, his face hardened immediately at the voice and he turned round to see the Sandem Hokage in his battle armor. Wow you got nulled. Many rounds of slaps could be heard when palms hit faces, that happens when you disappear for five almost six years Naruto. He said in a deadpan. Naruto created for shadow clones and had them go to the edge of the training grounds and place a barrier that was red, it reached the top of the trees allowing for room to jump if need be and stretched for two training fields for space and was blood red in color. What is the barrier for? Tsunade asked but before anyone spoke Jiraiya entered the conversation, it's for our protection, he is fighting seriously and you don't want to fight him when he is serious. He replied without his usual tone. Inside the barrier, the same conversation was going on, so what is the barrier for Naruto Kuen? He asked already knowing, I care for my family more than anything, I will not harm them when I fight seriously. The Sandem Hokage sighed and shook his head, You still haven't forgiven this old man for the council's actions? You were Hokage, missions had to go through you to be approved, which meant you must have approved it. Win this fight old man without sustaining any serious damage and I will forgive you. He said in a slightly angry tone. So be it. And he fell into the stance for his personal fighting style that he created when he was younger which revolved around using the terrain to your advantage, unfortunately Naruto knew this and intended to get rid of any terrain before the fight truly started. Let's dance old man. He said as he held the horse hand sign and took a deep breath, at the same time Jiraiya took a gasp of breath hoping his sensei would be alright. Katan, Goka Makyaku, Fire Release, Great Fire Annihilation A condensed stream of fire released from Naruto for 2 meters before spreading 30 meters high reaching the top of the barrier and widening 20 meters, everyone present knew this jutsu, he used it 5 years ago when he fought for Kanoha in the invasion destroying a huge chunk of the invasion force but this time it was almost 3 times the strength unlike before it seemed that he completed it. There was no way he was going to dodge so he had to escape underground using Dotan Mogirigakur no Jutsu, Earth Release, hiding like a mole, to appear after the flames had passed over his head thus was safe to come out, he came out slowly and cautiously and looked around, the trees that were in the barrier earlier were destroyed and nothing but ash with little pits of fire here and there that were soon to be put out without sufficient matter to burn. Well that was interesting, looks like you completed the Jutsu from a couple years ago. He received a nod in return. I removed the trees so you couldn't use them in your taijutsu style, I know you used the terrain so I made it flat with nowhere to hide for an easier fight. He commented making Saratobi curse under his breath, he hadn't noticed that yet. Shall we skip taijutsu? You can't use yours effectively and have no doubt gotten slower than the last time whilst I have gotten fast and stronger with better reflexes over the years, it would be unfair to you to continue the taijutsu portion of the test and as I loathe to admit it you aren't my enemy so I won't fight you to the extremes anyway. He said with a sigh getting a nod from the older man before said man bit his thumb and started going through hand seals at a fast pace getting attention from Naruto. Kuchios no jutsu. Summoning. A monkey appeared wearing what looking like a zebra skin jacket with a belt around his waist and a Kanoha forehead protector, the monkey looked to be taller than Saratobi by an inch or two. Oh ho, this must be the great monkey King Enma I've heard so much about from my summons. 
He said with a smile, it was a rare opportunity to meet a boss summon in the field of battle and excited him to no end to see what these two were capable of even if the monkey boss was smaller than most bosses he was still a boss and was dangerous. Saratobi, why have you summoned me? I don't see Orochimaru around and you said you would summon me next time you fought him. Well yes, but I'm fighting against Naruto and he has gotten strong. I thought you would like to help me test his weapon strength? Oh so the brat has grown up? Last time I saw him he was about a foot tall, I hear great things about him from the toads. He smiled whilst Jiraiya was grumbling no respect even from my summons, what is this world coming to? Let's do this Sarutobi. Henge, Kangonioi, transform, Adamantin staff, Enma the Monkey King transformed into a long five-foot bow staff that was white on each end and black in the middle and got into stance. Oh we are going for weapons now are we? He grinned to himself whilst getting a gulp from Saratobi, that grin couldn't be good. Naruto proceeded to open his jacket and show the inside was lined with scrolls like a jonin flak vest. He removed a scroll and opened it whilst channeling some chakra. What came out surprised everyone except his traveling companions, instead of his famed chakra sabers that were mentioned within the bingo book, now he had a war fan not unlike Madara Uchiha, but his fan was black on the inside including a black handle with the outside a blood red color, on it were four symbols, in the top right was the Uchiha fan, in the top left was the Namake's emblem, a simple twister indicating the storm in which most of their members were known for and the old Kekiai Genkai. They had that died out a couple of decades ago called Storm Release. In the bottom left was the Uzumaki swirl and in the bottom right was the emblem for Kanoha, the leaf that sat upon their headbands. This war fan I had made, it is made out of Yuzu metal that I mined from Yuzu herself when I visited and studied at the secret Uzumaki archives for my few Jutsu mastery, I have several seals on it and I have yet to find something that can break it even Orochimaru tried with his famed blade and nothing happened. He explained getting a raised eyebrow from everyone except his traveling friends. Why did Orochimaru try? Explain later, let's just say he made it to the top of my shit list and will be killed soon as my spy ring has found his location which will be soon, remind me to integrate my and Jiraiya's rings together sometime in the future. He finished. They both charged at each other after just a second's notice, both at low jonin speeds just to get a feel for the other, Saratobi had years of experience on him and his bow staff was unbreakable so the legend goes whilst he had only wielded the gun by for a few years and didn't have extreme amounts of time to practice it after Kushina was born. Saratobi tried to end it quickly by going for his footing and hopefully damaging a leg to stop his speed but Naruto wasn't such an amateur that this would happen, he used his gun by as a third leg and with his left foot used the bow staff for balancing then brought his right foot round to attempt to kick Saratobi in the face with high speeds. Saratobi leaned back and Naruto bounced backwards off the bow staff with his gun by in his right hand, this could get annoying, do you think I should get like a chain thing for my gun by so I can always have it on hand? He asked casually, actually yes, you almost lost it there when you tried to jump away which would have ended the weapons portion of the test. He concluded. You are frighteningly good with that bow staff, I guess the monkeys taught you their style and with your experience of war it will be almost impossible to catch you off guard won't it? He finished with a smile, he was enjoying himself. You are right again Naruto-kun, I always forget what an analyst you were when you were younger Naruto-kun. I hope you don't mind that I'm going to be a bit of a dick here and speed up a bit eh? His weights and resistance seals were long dropped, even he didn't know what his top speed was with the seals off because he never had to go that fast. He had long surpassed his father in speed and had stopped the training with his resistance seals simple due to the fact that if he leveled them any higher then he would begin to tear his muscles to frequently leaving him an eventual cripple, so he leveled them at 14 and refused to go any higher until he was older in a couple of years when his muscles were able to continue the training but he really saw no immediate need for extreme speed like his own. He moved at high jonin pushing low sanin speeds to see if the old man could keep pace and he was surprised by the fact that he could, he wasn't sure if he was pushing chakra or not since he hadn't activated his sharingan yet but was interested nonetheless. Naruto went for a slash downwards towards the old man but it was blocked by Enma in bow staff form, both were pushing against each other with incredible strength for either a young shinobi or almost impossible strength for an older shinobi like Saratobi, you've been practicing the bow staff whilst I was away? 
I doubt you could have this type of body strength in old age, according to my clones when you fought Orochimaru years ago you didn't. Saratobi just smiled, I've been looking forward to this for a while, I knew you would come back stronger than the jonin of this village and either as strong or stronger than my students, it was just in your nature to get stronger to protect but with my betrayal before you left then you had nothing else to do but train to get your mind off it, you were bound to become strong so I trained some. Let's see if you can keep up he said smiling the entire time as he channeled more wind chakra into the edge of his gunbai and used his right hand to push the other side of the gunbai making it almost impossible to not fall to a knee. Before he fell to a knee Sarutobi kicked Naruto in the stomach providing him a free moment to jump away and as Naruto was flipping in the air to get upright he saw Sarutobi throwing several ninja stars and using the Kuga Shuriken no Jutsu Shuriken Shadow Clone to turn 10 into 50. Naruto blinked before he out of reflex activated his Sharingan and moved at a faster speed to block the incoming ninja stars with his gunbai. As the stars bounced off of the gunbai Naruto swung the gunbai using a low-level futon, detapa, wind release, great breakthrough, to send the ninja stars back to their senders with a fast pace. With too many stars coming to block with Enma without getting hit by a stray ninja star Sarutobi smashed Enma's staff form into the ground so it stood upright before going through several hand seals for a very basic earth jutsu to make a wall of earth to block an incoming attack Dotan, Doriahiki, earth release, earth wall. A wall of earth rose out of the ground in front of them both and Sarutobi heard lots of little thuds indicating that all the stars had made contact with the wall. He let go of the chakra flowing to the wall and it fell back into the ground ninja stars and all whilst Naruto placed his gun by on his back via a chakra seal his head that held anything in place as long as chakra was provided. Well it looks like I won that round Sarutobi, eh? What do you mean? he asked confusedly. I made you abandon your main weapon of choice for a jutsu, you've lost the weapons round. He hated to admit it but Naruto was right. He had hoped that the ninja stars would catch him off balance and do a little damage to slow him down but it backfired against him. Fine, Enma you can go now, I lost the weapons battle fair and square. He said with a childish pout on his face at being outsmarted and getting a nod of understanding from Enma whom disappeared in a proof of smoke back to his home world. Next lesson? Agreed, ninjutsu it is. Let's see how good you are Naruto-kun he said with a smile at the end. Me? What about you? You're meant to be known as the professor. I want to see how extensive your knowledge is. He said, oh and congratulations, you forced me to use my Sharingan with that little ninja star trick of yours earlier. I hadn't enough time to block safely without it so well done, but you are going to regret it now. Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clones Two clones appeared beside Naruto one of them disappeared in a proof of smoke like it dispelled getting a raised eyebrow from the crowd whilst the second and first done two different seals ending for a different jutsu each. Futan de Tapa whilst the second Naruto breathed in a breath and exhaled forming a giant flaming dragon that spun around itself three times before a dragon's head formed and roared spitting seventeen balls of flame that were enhanced by the wind of the previous jutsu. When the balls touched the ground they exploded and expanded with flames to create a carpet of destruction. This jutsu was created by Naruto during some downtime when he was thinking about the elemental dragon techniques that resided in different nations, he felt that they could be improved upon and came up with this after a while. Combined with a wind jutsu and you have a very deadly attack. Barely having time to set up an earth wall Sarutobi done the next best thing which was to create an earth platform where the balls of flame couldn't reach providing a safe haven from the attack or so he thought, as the platform rose high into the sky putting him on a pedestal the clone that he though dispelled earlier appeared from beneath him most likely using the same earth technique he used earlier to escape from Naruto and exploded in his face. Naruto may have strongly disliked the man for what he'd done but that was no means a reason to kill him so he powered it down enough just to knock him unconscious from either the blast or the fall to earth he was about to get. The onlookers watched including the hidden ANBU guards as the Sandame Hokage fell to the ground unconscious with a thump. Silence reigned as Naruto smiled and ordered his clones to let the barrier go then dispel. No one moved except Kushina and Yujito who ran over to him and gave him a hug or in Kushina's case a sloppy kiss on the cheek as he picked her up and twirled her round saying well aren't you daddy's little princess, with mild amusement, apparently dad was the favorite out of her parents which he was totally fine with. Ugh Tsunade, you might want to check on him? 
You are a medic, aren't you, or have you drank too much and forgotten how to mull chakra? He said with a disarming smile which snapped everyone out of their stupor. Brat! She shouted clearly not amused with his comment and then went to check on her master, he walked over to his family and friends getting a congratulations from them and a what the fuck? From Kakashi and Yugo who seemed to remember their Hokage being a lot stronger than that when he fought Orochimaru years ago. Well done brat, you didn't even need sage mode, just incredibly sneaky tactics. Jiraiya said with a bright smile, they wouldn't have worked if he was still an active shinobi of Kage level, his instincts have dulled down a bit and so have his reflexes, but that's expected with age. He said sagely whilst the others nodded and Kakashi was happy he didn't have to battle the blonde earlier. Oh that reminds me sensei, come back in six months and I will give you the seal that controls my spy network so it can be activated by your blood and chakra in case I'm not available, that should give Kanoa's spy master an easier time sensei? He said whilst nudging him in the ribs. Jiraiya smiled in return but was interrupted before he could speak, well done brat, he has a few fractures a small case of chakra exhaustion due to not actively using chakra like most shinobi but apart from that he is fine and you won so congratulations on your jonin promotion. Jonin? I was a genin wasn't I, he asked confusedly, no you were a chunin when you left, you just happened to leave before you could be told due to the council meeting you called. Oh. I was a Chunin for five years and didn't know it. He snickered to himself. I'll take a Genin team Tsunade if you got one, a Nara and two civilians should do it, the Nara for leadership when I can't and the two civilians for brute force, when I'm done they will be owning the Chunin exams. He said with a small smirk that all Uchiha men seem to have present on their faces all the time except as comes out every now and then. Fine, it just so happens that a class just graduated recently and I didn't have enough jonin to go around it also happens that a lone Nara girl was in the class, she couldn't be part of another Inoshika Cho trio due to being the only one of the three present in the class. That's fine, I'll pick them up Monday at class. By Tsunade, oh one more thing before I go, tell the old man he is forgiven, I hardly ever get such a decent fight anymore so it's the least I can do he said with a smile before flashing his family away. Brat's annoying as hell, but he's got style. She muttered before leaving herself and the ANBU to take her sensei home. Three days later, Monday, the first day of his Jonin sensei career. The sun just hated him right now as it shined brightly in his windows telling him it was time to wake up, looking down he saw a half-naked Yujito laying with her head on his chest. Just the sight of her made his heart skip a beat, she was his perfection in every way and he would die to protect his family. He remembered a time when he was conversing with his godfather about how shinobi measure their legends that are to be told through the ages to come, a shinobi's legend is told through their deaths, they could stand against an army and win but when they die a good death worthy of their legend people forget about their life's work and focus only on how they died. He was damn sure of his skills and was even more sure that he wouldn't die to leave his daughter to grow up alone but just in case he had been setting shadow clones aside since he was back to write down all his knowledge from his shinobi life and experience to place in the library for his daughter should something happen to him. Slowly getting out of bed and getting dressed he walked tiredly towards the kitchen where he met his mother looking just as tired both not having had their morning coffee yet. Morning Kaya-san. Morning, you get your new genin team today? Yes, expect them to come round every now and then for dinner. He said with a smile, he was looking forward to giving his knowledge to some genin who would one day most likely have some sort of high ranking within the village since he was getting the infamous Team 7 that always ended up as legends. Making some breakfast before departing to the Hokage's office to watch his new team with the other jonin senseis through the crystal ball that the sandame had given to Tsunade for a welcoming present. Entering the office he found himself being stared at by all the jonin senseis, he found Karinai and Asuma amongst the new sensei so he assumed that their old team were jonin or at least chunin, they were both looking a bit older and Asuma had a few grey hairs here and there in his beard but otherwise looked the same as he remembered. Sup? They all just stared blankly at him still not believing the rumors that were going around about him and how he beat the Sandam Hokage in battle, okay stop staring now it's getting old, let's see my cute jonin team of misfits? He walked over to the crystal ball and saw his team, one Nara who looked as lazy as the rest and two civilian boys who looked excited about finally becoming Genin. 
He smiled, the two boys reminded him of himself when he was younger and just becoming a ninja. With that in mind he decided he would pass them without the test, he saw greatness in his team. Hokage-sama Everyone stopped looking at the ball in front of them and looked towards himself, what brat? Team 7 passes, I will pay for a 6-month D-rank mission for my team with me as the client. If you need a reason for the mission then just say they will be keeping my compound clean. He finished with an eye smile like his former sensei and older brother figure. Tsunade developed an eye twitch at how he was debasing some of the oldest traditions of the Jonin senseis. What do you mean brat? You haven't even met them yet? Well I saw them through the ball and I'm quite happy with how they are talking to each other and they seem friends so teamwork is fine. That's not what I meant. I meant why the deranked mission. Oh that? I am a firm believer that the academy is shit so I will take the six months when they are meant to be doing deranked missions to get their level up and then depending on how they do I will take them on some C-ranked missions and recommend them for the Chunin exams, it's been a while aren't they hosted here again this year Sonade? That, I am annoyed to say is actually a good idea and yes they're hosted here again in around eight months. Good. In that case I shall be on my way to pick up my little team of misfits. He finished with a wave of his hand and disappeared in a flash of light to one of the pre-placed flying thunder god tags that his clones had already placed around the village for ease and reappeared outside the academy. He walked into the academy with a calm board-like walk and knocked on the door just in time to hear Irika finish speaking Team 7 is Shurkunara, Mino, no last name and Ken, no last name, your sensei is. He finished looking at the name and started stuttering in surprise. Naruto Uchiha Namikaze Everyone lifted their heads at that, the son of the fourth Hokage and an Uchiha, they were the greatest sensei you could get according to their childlike views. He chose that moment to walk in the door. Yo! He said with a wave and an eye smile. Now where are my little team of misfits, raise your hands team 7, he finished in a calm yet commanding tone. Instantly three hands went up, even the lazy Nara girl raised her hand without the word troublesome. Good, meet me on the roof and we will have introductions, be there in less than five minutes. He said and shunchened in a flock of crows to the roof leaving a room full of surprised Jenin. They all ran out of the room and went to the roof as fast as they can and arrived in just under four minutes which surprised him but he kept a stoic face. All right good timing, let's begin with introductions, I'll start. My name is Naruto Uchiha Namikaze, but I am also part Uzumaki, I like my family, I dislike those who would seek to harm my family and my dream. To be able to retire without worry that my enemies will hurt my family. You next Shirku. Troublesome, my name is Shirku Nara, I like cloud watching and I dislike rushing. My dreams? I don't really have one at the moment so we will see in the future. Okay, next Mino. My name is Mino, I don't know my parents and I'm an orphan from what I presume is a civilian family so I hope to become a well-known shinobi. I like my friends in training, I dislike arrogant people with elitist attitudes and I already said my dream. Very well, last is Ken. My name is Ken and like Mino, I'm an orphan, my parents died in the Suna slash Odo invasion years ago. I like my memories of my family and friends, I dislike Odo immensely and my dreams for the future would be to settle down when I'm older and have a semi-large family. Okay good, there may be a time when we face Odo forces in the future, this is your one warning, if you disobey me when in the field I will have your chakra sealed and thrown out of the ranks for insubordination. Ken shrunk into himself as he weakly nodded his head in affirmation. Good now let me explain some things. Usually you would have a secondary test to see how you work together before you become genin, but I have chosen to forego this test due to the fact that I know you are all friends from you files so teamwork shouldn't be an issue. For the next six months you will be training with me, as I told Tsunade, I am a firm believer that the academy is shit and teach wrong so we will train and then do C-rank missions and the occasional B-rank mission before I enter you in the Chunin exams in eight months, depending on what level you are all at. Any questions? Shirku raised her hand, we aren't in the academy anymore no raising hands just ask. Naruto stated getting a nod from the young Nara. Since we aren't at the academy anymore and we are meant to be doing D-rank missions to earn income how will my teammates survive without the orphan stipend they stopped getting when they became genin? 
Good question, you just made yourself the strategist on the team when I'm not available. The answer is simple. The next six months is going to be a long as D-rank mission where at the end of each month you will get a month's worth of D-rank pay, but don't worry you guys are my team meaning you are family, you're more than welcome to come over to mine for dinner anytime. They all nodded and the two orphans each had a smile on their face. Right the day is still young so I will give you a rough outlay of the next three months of training and then we will reschedule the next three months after that to see what needs more focus and what doesn't. First month is quite simple. I will work you into the ground on chakra control to not only build your reserves but also strengthen your coils and stamina that you will receive by using chakra excessively. You will all be getting a seal placed on you that will disrupt your chakra flow and force it to be piss poor once you mastered the basic chakra control exercises and every time you get it back up I will remove it for a day to allow you to get used to it then reapply it. This will also expand your chakra reserves. Any questions on the first month? Once again Shirku raised her hand but then put it down remembering what he said before and asked how do you know so much about seals to apply such an advanced one? I'm a seal master like my father and godfather. Any other questions? None. Okay then second month is where we start to get into the more physical side of a shinobi lifestyle, you will all learn my taijutsu style which is one of the best in the village, I created it when I was younger and is called the hummingbird. No matter what you will not teach this style to anyone unless you have my express permission which at the moment I will not grant. I will make you speed demons, I am a firm believer in the fastest shinobi is the strongest, if they can't touch you then they can't kill you. For this to work I will give each of you chakra weights at the start of the second month and depending on how you do I will also add a resistance seal that makes it feel like you are always running through water. Naruto finished and the three students paled since that sounded more like torture rather than training. Seeing no questions he decided to finish up his three-month training regiment, month three is the fun bit, ninjutsu training. I have the Sharingan and know lots of techniques from most elements and have created loads myself which I will pass on to you three as my students. Make no mistake, you three will be legends the likes this world have never seen but you have to work for it. Nothing in this life is free and we are shinobi which is a life of sacrifice, you must be prepared to sacrifice your time, sweat and tears for strength. Sadist. Shirku mumbled under her breath causing Naruto to smile. Naruto pulled a scroll from his sage jacket that he wore and opened it producing three of his tripronged kunai and three leather strapped books that looked like journals. He handed one of each to his students getting a raised eyebrow. Throughout my life I have bled and killed for this village. In fact the Suna slash Odo invasion we were going to be overrun by a secondary army of 1000 shinobi from Suna and Odo, I was the only one who knew about it at the time and didn't have enough time to inform anyone so I summoned the big three of the Toad clan from their homes to take care of the invading summons whilst I faced down an army of 1000 strong on my own. I killed them all and left only one alive to deliver a message to Suna about betraying us again, I am haunted by the men I've killed. They come to me in my sleep, this is only part of the sacrifice that I have made for this village. The journals are for you to write down about your training, I expect you to write in them once a week and once we start taking missions I expect you three to write a brief overview of the mission obviously without mentioning specifics, I find that this keeps the dreams away and honors the men I've killed for their sacrifices they gave their country. To die protecting what you love is a shinobi's greatest honor and curse, remember that. All three nodded in understanding but then asked about the kunai, I am a namakase and as such have mastered my father's jutsu the Horation no jutsu to an almost inexpressible level, you are expected to keep the kunai on you at all times so I can reach you should something happen. He said in a commanding voice once again getting nods of understanding, the three genin placed the kunai in journals in their pouches. Now the day is still young so why don't I show you your first chakra control exercise. Not waiting for a response he walked over to a tree with the genin in tow. For a rookie genin, such as yourselves the most difficult place to move the chakra in your body is the bottom of the feet but shinobi using it in such a way every day so it is taken for granted and is one of the first skills a shinobi should learn. Observe. He calmly walked up the tree leaving three stupid looking genin with open mouths, he hung upside down on the lowest branch so he could still talk to them. Channel chakra to your feet and run up the tree. He said whilst throwing a kunai at each of their feet. Too much and you blast off the tree, too little and you slip and fall. 
No one will catch you so be careful. If you get to the top by the end of the day and I see that your control is adequate and reserves large enough then I will teach you three a basic jutsu that ninja use every day. He said smiling as he dropped to the floor and leaned against a tree not too far away and begun writing in his own journal about his genin team whilst smiling at the attempts the genin were making. It became apparent rather quickly that Shirku had medium reserves and high control as most of her clan's genin did due to the amount of chakra and control it took to manipulate shadows like they did. Mino had the largest reserves of the three and poorest control something that made no sense if his parents were civilians which made him think that they were ninja but non-clan ninja. Naruto turned on his Sharingan to watch him get a few steps up the tree and then fall due to using too much chakra. He shook his head and deactivated his Sharingan. His third and last student seemed to be rather level-headed and reminded him of himself when he was younger, he seemed to think outside the box. He watched as Ken stood a foot of the ground exactly like he did when he was younger getting a feel for the amount of chakra needed before trying to move up the tree getting just under a quarter the way up before falling. He smiled, he was going to like his new team. Three hours passed and it was almost lunchtime, he didn't need his Sharingan to see that his genin were running on fumes. To be honest he was rather surprised at the fact that they had lasted this long with the exercise. Each genin had made it just above halfway and they seemed to be getting frustrated so he decided to give them a break. All right come down and come over here. He shouted as he put his journal away, he always liked writing in it and strangely enough he hadn't needed it until his training trip which gave him the idea that it was something to do with the incident he had before leaving for his trip with his godfather. The genin waddled over to him, the tree had a nice bit of shade and the sun was burning strong for the summer. Sit down and enjoy a break guys, I will go get you lunch and bring it here for you, then we will continue, this will give you a chance to regenerate your chakra reserves. He said, getting a nod before all three collapsed under a tree. Grinning he got up and shunchened to the dango stand, hey Shiro, can I get four of the Anko special please? You must be hungry to get all that just for yourself? The man named Shiro who owned the store said. Nah, I got a new genin team and I made them exhaust their chakra so I thought I would get them lunch whilst they had a break. He finished smiling, Shiro was one of the people that never said anything bad to him when he was younger much like the Ichiraku family but he hardly ever came here due to his reputation in his younger days. Shiro nodded and prepared the order whilst Naruto took out his money to pay, thanks man you're a lifesaver. He said before shunshining with his dango bag to the Nara compound. He made his way to Shikamaru's house where the clan head and his family stayed and knocked. Shikaku answered the door and was surprised to see the infamous Naruto Uchiha Namakaze that was so popular nowadays. Can I help you Naruto? Can I come in? Some things need to be talked about in private. He said ominously without knowing he had piqued the interest of the man. Opening the door further he let himself in as they walked to the living room which his wife was residing in at the moment. Hello Yoshino-san. Naruto said, getting her attention. Naruto-san. Sitting down all three descended into an awkward silence before Shikaku decided to break it. What can I do for you today Naruto? I recently took a genin team. He said, getting their attention. He made it clear to the council that he wasn't planning on teaching anyone his secrets. I requested a team and there were three orphans in the class so I decided to take them as a team and make them legends. He finished with a smile. That's nice. Yoshino said not really caring but trying to be polite. I'll get to the point, this is obviously semi-awkward for us. Who are Shirku Nara's current carers since I know she is an orphan? He asked, getting their attention. My family. She is the daughter of Yoshino's friends so we took her in after they died when she was younger. Why? Don't take this the wrong way, but she doesn't seem like the typical Nara. Explain. Shikako said, taking a little offense to that. She is smart, incredibly so, but she seems very applied in her training unlike other Nara I've seen. I'm just wondering if there is anything that caused that? 
Shikako sighed and rubbed the bridge of his nose, Naras tend to be lazy until they get a wake-up call usually by something happening in the field, like Shikamaru for instance got his when Sasuke left and he was made captain of the retrieval squad, everyone came back with critical injuries except him. He realized that he had been slacking in his training and although he was made chunin hadn't put the effort in to actually acquire new skills. She got hers when her parents died. Oh, that's terrible. It is. While I've gave her a standing invitation like the rest of my team to come over to mine for dinner anytime, we are a team and therefore family. He said, getting a smile from Yoshino. One more thing before I go, I've observed your clan's shadow manipulation and come to the conclusion that it is a Kekiai Genkai that relies on shape manipulation, am I correct? He asked with a knowing look in his eye. You are. Okay then, I was just deciding if I should get her started on shape manipulation at a later date. Thanks, bye. He said before disappearing in a red flash and reappearing outside Tsunade's office. He walked in and waved to an irate Tsunade doing paperwork. Yo Tsunade. He said, getting her attention. What brat? Can't you see I'm busy, she moaned. I'm here to pick up my team's D-rank mission that I filed for this morning. He smiled annoying her. She tossed the scroll at him and he left, but not before saying shadow clones are incredibly useful don't you think Tsunade, and disappeared in a red flash towards his genin's beacon. I'm back, here's lunch, eat and then continue. He said, giving each of them a box of dango whilst he had his own. They ate in relative silence as they just enjoyed the quiet and food. The boys were first to finish before continuing and then Shirku joined them, by the end of the day the genin almost made it to the top, it was more than enough to impress him so he decided to reward them and called them over once again. You three have done good work today. I am rather impressed, it seems that given the right incentive you three can find the determination to meet the challenge placed in front of you. He said earning a tired stare from his students. He produced three small scrolls and handed one to each of them, this contains a jutsu that is deranked but is a supplementary jutsu used by all ninja regularly called Shunshin no Jutsu. One of my clan before it was exterminated was called Shunshin no Shusui across the nations due to his combat version of this technique. Your reserve should be large enough to use this once or twice but no more than 50 meters distance from the starting point. When you complete it and your reserves are big enough I will give you its older brother that I created called the Flash Step, I made it so my family can transition from the high speeds of the advanced Shunshin to the Horation. I don't use it that often so no one knows about it. You aren't going to learn Horation ever, so don't get your hopes up. He finished with a smile. They nodded, work on this in your own time and no more than 50 meters before I tell you otherwise. He smiled before disappearing in a red flash leaving his extended family to find their own way home. It had been three days since Naruto had first met and started to train his new genin team and in that time each of the genin and his team had shown a fierce determination and work ethic not unlike his own in completing the tasks assigned to them by Naruto. They could all tree walk and make it up and down the trees at least six times with their current chakra reserve which was good considering that they were fresh genin just out of the academy. Naruto was smiling as he was walking towards the field assigned to his team for training, he was thinking about his daughter and when he should start teaching her to control her chakra so that he could unseal her dojitsu, it had pained him so to watch his daughter suffer in pain when he applied the seal to her but it was for her own good. He decided that he would start teaching her chakra control when she turned three since by then he hoped to have her talking like normal kids and her chakra was unlocked naturally at birth so he didn't have to waste time unlocking it when he could give her some leaves to stick to her head. He arrived at the training ground at 7 a.m. which was when he and his team's day started, but unlike his gen and sensei he was on time more often than not. All right, gather up team. His team instantly stopped what they were doing and came over to him. You've all been practicing hard these past few days and you can almost make it up and down the tree ten times which is enough for what I have planned later, so let's push through today and hopefully we can expand your chakra reserves just that little bit more and meet the deadline. Whilst you do that I will be sitting over by that tree watching and writing notes on new jutsu that I am planning to make, so get to it. He said in an commanding tone at the end. Each nodded in acceptance and then pushed themselves hoping to finish the training today. 
Naruto sat down by the tree and started observing the genin, he paid especially close attention to his lone female student, her natural talent with the shadows and his skill in creating jutsu will most likely lead to amazing feats yet to be seen from the Nara clan. He would need to get her started on shape manipulation in the next six months and hopefully get the other two started in nature manipulation since the Nara clan didn't tend to have a chakra nature until they were older and developed it through strict training. He was brought out of his thoughts around midday when he felt a call from the kunai his fiancée always carried with her which meant only one thing, there was an emergency that she couldn't deal with and protect their daughter at the same time. Kai flooded the area causing the genin to fall as they looked to see a scowl on the face of their sensei with an activated eternal Mangekyo Sharingan primed and ready for combat. Stay here and continue training, some fools are about to die dancing with me. He said in an angry voice hoping to get his point across and disappeared in a flash of reed only to intercept a chakra blade going to pierce his fiancée with Susanoo's hand. There was his wife standing in front of his daughter protecting her against twenty men in blank white masks that he recognized instantly, he wondered what took that cripple so long to reappear on the grid but apparently his was biding his time and wanted to start with his wife and daughter, this would not be allowed to stand. He spoke in a cold voice, what does Danzo want from my fiancé and daughter? They all looked to each other and shrugged, nothing but he wants to cause you pain. The speaker was instantly engulfed in black flames and burned to ashes. I give you this one chance, stop and leave this place, you have invaded my home and endangered my family, if you continue to persist I will slaughter you. It took them five seconds to make their minds up and he instantly molded his Susanu armor around his wife and daughter whilst he took care of the intruders. He couldn't use any jutsu here because it was too close to his house and would be too destructive, he decided to go with the old classics such as a futon-empowered kunai. He sliced and cut them to pieces. They were nothing to him but ants and he attempted to show mercy but they continued to try and hurt him by using his family, this wouldn't stand and he would cut them all down but one. Using his superior speed, he ran past 19 of the 20 men and stabbed them with the futon enhanced kunai at one of the 8 kill points in the human body, the last man got a chakra enhanced foot to the sternum which resulted in a loud crack, he would live without medical treatment yet it would be incredibly painful to move. Yet move he would when he retreated to Danzo. Naruto stood over the last man with an evil smile and crouched down to look him in the eyes, run to your master and tell him that he has made it to the number two spot on my shit list right after our Oki team and that I will be seeing him again real soon. The man said and did nothing except disappear in a swirl of leaves, he created shadow clones to gather the bodies and seal them in a scroll to give to Tsunade. He looked towards his fiancée and daughter inside his Susa new armor that he forgot he still had up and let the ethereal warrior dissipate. His daughter looked at him in awe whilst his fiancée looked in worrier, he just smiled, she always worried about him even when he fought bandits, she was truly the best part of him. Are you two all right? He asked calmly with his normal eyes. They both nodded but Kushina jumped into his arms and hugged him as tightly as a child can, he smiled. What happened Yujito? He asked without them Chan suffix allowing her to know he was serious. We were fine, your brother is still out on mission and your mother was in town shopping, Kushina wanted to play in the garden so we went out back and that's when these men came, I would have had a hard time with them but I was protecting Kushina so I called you with your kunai and you know what happened then. She said. He sighed when a clone of himself came over with the scroll. Kushina-chan, do you want to meet my new team that I'm training? He asked with a small smile getting a raised eyebrow from his fiancée. She nodded enthusiastically which he returned with a smile and looked to Yujito, we have to see Tsunade and this will give my team a chance to meet Kushina. He explained. She nodded and held his hand as they disappeared in a flash of red back to the training grounds to find his team still working on the tree walking exercise. Gather up team. They all stopped and looked towards their sensei with a woman and a child in his arms and walked over to him. Team this is my fiancé, Yuji Doni, and this is our daughter Kushina Namike Zachiha. He looked towards Yuji Do, this is my team, Shirkunara, Mino, and Ken. They nodded to each other but Kushina attempted to get out of Naruto's arms to walk over to them and say hi, he let her down and walked over to Shirku who was attempting not to jump the poor girl and never let go. Something had come up, training is cancelled and instead you have a mission. 
My daughter is the target and she is to be protected at all times until me or my wife return. He said in a serious voice before giving Kushina a kiss on her forehead and disappearing with his wife in a flash or red towards the Hokage Tower. It was still rather early in the morning so Tsunade was still asleep at her desk with an empty sake bottle in her hands, most ninja know not to wake her up when she is like this, but then again Naruto wasn't considered most ninja. He walked over and kicked her legs, he had to react fast to catch Tsunade's wrist and stop a chakra-enhanced fist sending him into the wall. Wake up you lazy woman. He said in a cold tone that sent chills down Yujito's spine. What do you want Gaki? I was sleeping. Explain to me how twenty unregistered nuke Nin made it into this village and attacked my family. He responded with his Sharingan active. What? Twenty of Danzo's men attacked my family, if I had not returned when I did then my fiancé and daughter would most likely be dead. I don't know. What did you do to piss Danzo off? Naruto? I'm ordering you as your Hokage to explain now. She finished getting rather annoyed. It's classified by order of the third Hokage. Unclassify it. I can't, there are rules in place to stop newer Hokages finding out about SS-class secrets unless the older Hokage explains them, they were put in place by Lord Second to allow the newer could get a clean slate so to speak. The only way to unclassify it is to get sand name to allow it. She frowned, SS-class meant something big and most likely a cover-up on a massive scale, she didn't like the idea that her former teacher would do something like this, but she understood the weight of the Hokage's hat better than anyone at the moment. She snapped her fingers and an ANBU agent appeared kneeling in front of the Hokage, Tori, I want you to retrieve Sandame Sama, tell him it's urgent. The agent nodded and disappeared in a flurry of leaves. Naruto raised an eyebrow, you really want to know? I don't like secrets behind my back. She said in a tone of finality. Be warned, you may not like what you see behind the curtain of Shinobi. She raised her eyebrow at that, but before she could say anything the ANBU arrived with Saratobi Hiruzen. You called Lady Hokage? He asked with mirth evident in his voice at being called to the Hokage's office where he used to work by the Hokage. What did you do to piss Danzo off old man? She asked. Saratobi paled immediately and looked to Naruto with a raised eyebrow as if asking what's this about? The fool sent some of his men to attack my family. He will pay. Sarutobi sighed, sealed the room. Tsunade nodded and followed the request. Heruzen looked to Naruto as if to explain you have my permission Naruto. He nodded, the Uchiha clan were planning a coup against the third Hokage, it would have thrown out village into civil war and we weren't ready for any kind of war at that point, we were just getting over the Kyubi attack and replenishing our forces. Danzo had the magical idea of having the entire Uchiha clan accept me and Sasuke wiped out by my older brother who would then go on to buy an S-class Nukneen that would feed Kanoha information on the outside world. I was not happy with this. This man would sacrifice my family? My mother, my brother, and myself for Kanoha? Ye right. I stormed the Hokage's office in a fit of rage and forced the advisors and Sandame to use another plan that I came up with. The Uchiha clan would still be wiped from existence for the short time whilst my family would be safe and Danzo who had been a thorn in mine and the Hokage side since my birth would be labeled a traitor to Kanoha and executed. We played him like a fiddle, he never knew what happened until me and Itachi finished our report and he made an excuse to be excused from the meeting and simply disappeared with his root force. He finished rather smugly towards the end. Why the fuck would you do that? What? All of it? I would not let another of my family be used as a scapegoat by this village, if I had to do something drastic then I would have. Idiot. Hardly, the fool will die next time we meet, but that isn't the point of this meeting Hokage. Explain now, how twenty unregistered nuke Nin managed to infiltrate this village and find my family home that is a secret from most of Kanoha to attack my fiancé and daughter? She was silent for a few minutes before speaking, I don't know, but I will find out. Good. Then this meeting is done, I have a team to train and a daughter to look after. 
He grabbed Yujito's hand and they disappeared in a flash of red arriving at the training grounds that they left their daughter at. Kushinachan. His daughter looked up from her leaf and smiled. What are you doing Kushinachan? Before she could answer, his lone female student did. She wouldn't stop going on about how awesome a ninja you were and that she wanted to start training so we gave her a leaf and told her what to do with it, she seemed content and quietened down making it easier to keep her safe. Good thinking. How was your training you three? We made it up the tree ten times but we were exhausted by the end of it, the only reason we are standing now is because each of us popped a soldier pill so that we can continue to watch your daughter. She finished with a smile as Kushina hugged her side. Naruto smiled, she seems to have taken a liking to you Shirku. Shirku Nichin is awesome too San. Kushina explained with all of her childish exuberance that she could muster. Naruto smiled at that. He looked up at the sky and realized that it was late afternoon, his meeting with the Hokage had gone on far longer than he thought. He still needed to apply security seals around his house to stop any more intruders, the old seals must have worn out whilst he was away on his training trip. That's it for today guys, tomorrow we will have a day off in celebration of you guys learning tree walking and giving your coils a chance to calm down after expending so much chakra constantly. If you do any training tomorrow at all make it physical. See you the day after tomorrow as 7 here. He said whilst he grabbed his family and disappeared in a flash of red again towards his home. The rest of the month passed relatively calmly, Naruto improved security around his compound with seals that only his team and family could bypass, he was taking no chances with his family whatsoever and he promised himself that Danzo would die painfully in the near future. The team each got water walking down by the end of the first week which amazed Naruto himself, he was so proud that he got a team with such a work ethic as them, they all had skills sure but they all worked for what they had and he was damn proud. Then came the training from hell for the next three weeks for his team as they called it. He used a seal that he was taught in case he ever had to fight another Jinshuriki called Gogiofuen also known as a five-pronged elemental seal. This seal was versatile and could be used on most things just to mess with control and if it was used atop of an even-numbered seal then it would most likely have the opposite effect on the user than what the seal was originally designed for. With this seal applied his team all felt as weak as five-year-olds due to lack of control over their chakra pools that had grown in recent days, Naruto instructed them to go over all the jutsu they knew until they could perform them again which was just the Academy 3 and Shunshin which they learnt in the second week, he didn't force them to redo the basic Bunshin because he himself couldn't do it still so he felt that it was unfair. By the end of the first month his team could water walk again with the Gogiofuen in place but they had just managed to stay atop the water for the required time on the last day, it took three weeks working nine hours a day on chakra control alone for this but the results they couldn't argue with. Their chakra control shot up to high chunin which was amazing for fresh genin and their reserves themselves, while Shirku's reserves went to low jonin due to the fact that they were already around mid chunin when she graduated. He couldn't work out for the life of him how they were so high but he figured that they were naturally bigger and when combined with the Nara Shadow Jutsu then they were forced to expand. His two civilian students were both around Lomad Chunin level of chakra which was once again amazing considering they were civilians and one month out of the academy. When he team shown him their abilities with the Shunshin no Jutsu he was happy enough to give them another Jutsu to learn in their own time but decided to stay within the supplementary range of Jutsu like the Shunshin was. He gave each of them a scroll on the Kage Shuriken no Jutsu, Shadow Shuriken, which could be applied to both Kanai and Shuriken to multiply the throne items. It took them two weeks to get it down to a position where they could all make ten clones of the weapons whilst they were sealed still. He himself was quite happy with their progress and invited them to a celebratory dinner with his family at the end of their first month, of course his daughter was very excited to see them again. Another thing that happened during the month, Kushina kept practicing with the leaf like she was shown and it was determined that although she had huge reserves for anyone her age he control was good enough to stop activating the Sharingan on accident so he unsealed her bloodline for her and explained the basics of the bloodline and what to do with it. She was all too happy to have a new toy to play with. Now he was outlining his students next month of training with them groaning at the end of every sentence, he generally felt bad for his students but he didn't want them to die when on mission and he wasn't there to save them so he pushed forward. 
Congratulations on your first month of training, as you see I have unsealed each of you and your chakra levels and control have improved by leaps and bounds but what good is having jutsu and control if you can't outrun an enemy? The next month is going to be physical and muscle memory exercises. He finished whilst unsealing three sets of weights like his own to give to his team. These are chakra weights, each of them max out at 250 kilograms. You will wear them when you train, eat, sleep, and even when you are in the shower from now on. I've even been nice and already set the weights to 15 kilograms on the legs and 10 on the wrists for each of you. Each of his students groaned whilst he just smiled on happy to receive the death glares from his students if it meant that they would survive the harsh realities of the ninja world. His students all put on their weights and he gave them the morning off to get used to them before they returned for the torture that was to come. In the morning before you come here you will run five laps around the village in under an hour. Your goal is to be able to do this in under half an hour by the end of the month and every time you up your weights you will do it again until you can do it under the specified time limit. When you arrive here at 8 a.m. from now on you will do a set of 75 push-ups, sit-ups, crunches and pull-ups. You will repeat each set of these until lunch at 1 p.m. You will have half hour for lunch so it is recommended that you bring a bento from home or go to the ramen stand since it is so close. He produced three sets of fingerless gloves that had a metal plate on the back of each hand with the leaf symbol on the plate and handed them to his students. They questioned what they were and got a response that would annoy them for the near future. I wear resistance seals over my body to make it harder to move. I also have the same weights that you have in case you were wondering, but these gloves have a localized form to resistance seals on them to make it harder to move your hands. In the afternoon you will run another five laps around the village and you can take as long as required for it this time, but as you run you will be performing the 12 hand seals that you were taught in the academy and once you have run through each of them you will do it in reverse constantly. This will not only improve muscle memory, but it will improve your hand seal speed due to the glove seals. It is afternoon, so get to your running. He said with a smile as he sat down by the tree he usually sat and continued to write his usual entry into his journal. As he did this he had time to ponder his dreams for the last few weeks and that was what he based his thoughts off of for this entry. Entry Journal the nightmares are getting worse, I'm starting to see my death every couple of nights now and it scares me to think that if these dreams were to come true then in the near future I will have to leave my fiancé and daughter alone in this world, I hope that they don't come to pass but at least if they do then I can count on my family to protect family. In these dreams I stand atop Gamabunta with his brothers Gamakin and Gamahiro beside me. Fukasaku and Shima are on my shoulders and I am in sage mode standing before a massive army. I see shinobi from different countries looking at me with hate and scorn, but I do not care, my eyes are set on the strongest of them, I recognize a few of them as Orochimaru, Anoki the great fence-sitter and Ada Reikage. We continue to speak until I am forced to attack, the dream gets blurry from there, but near the end of the day, as the sun is setting all that remains on the field that I stain red with the blood of my enemies is just over 1,000 men, all of whom are trying to kill me. I am exhausted by this point in time and all that is left of the Kage is A, however he is missing an arm and is severely exhausted just as I. He smiles and says a few words before catching me by surprise and punching me across the sea of corpses where I can't move. I have nothing left at this point, the toads were all gone, exhausted by battle and I face a shinobi's greatest moment, their death. But before I see what happens next I awaken in a cold sweat, shivering at the thought of leaving my family. In my youth I courted adventure and battle to test my strength so that one day I might be strong enough to protect my family but now I just want to live peacefully, too much damage has already been done by my hands and I fear that there is not enough time left in my life to make it right. End Entry He put his pen down and looked at the sun setting, he never got to see the small things like this anymore, he was always too busy with his family. He enjoyed the peace that he was haunted by just for this moment. By the end of the month his teen was in peak physical shape for someone their age, it also didn't help that he abused his medical seals like hell so that his team could race through the lower level weights to truly benefit from them. He commanded them to keep the weights on even at the end of the month, the same with their gloves, but explained that they would make their way through the weights and gloves at their own level from now on instead of him abusing his seals. He still had four months remaining and he figured he would spend the next two working on jutsu and elemental chakra, 
They may or may not get their respective elements mastered in this time, but at least they would have an easier time with Jutsu and it would further increase their chakra capacity for his later training. He handed each of them chakra paper and all three were giddy with excitement, he sometime forgot that they were still children with how they acted when training. He smiled as they put chakra into the cards and was quite surprised. Shirku who he thought would just have the shadow element of her clan because she was too young to have anything else had lightning, something he was incredibly pleased with since it meant that he could teach her some of his original jutsu. Nino had earth whilst Ken had fire. Oh he could already see some deadly team combinations coming from this little arrangement but first he decided to check his team's chakra level. He found out that by the end of the first month although his team's chakra control and capacity had increased there was a rather large deficit between the physical and spiritual energies which he would have to make up for so that was why he tortured his team for the second month on purely physical workouts. His was happy to find that his team's chakra levels had increased again, Shirku had increased reaching barely mid jonin levels but with her control she was bound to be a jutsu powerhouse later in life and his two male students had reached high chunin bordering low jonin levels of chakra with the same amount of control that they had before. He smiled, they would all be able to handle his trademark jutsu that he used for everything, Shirku could probably make around 10 clones before tiring whilst the two boys could make between 5 and 7 clones. This would be a big help to them, so he decided against his better judgment to teach them the Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. He handed them each a scroll and asked if they had any questions which got a negative shake of the head in return whilst he went to sleep leaving them to learn from the scrolls and telling them to wake him should they need help. You will not move on to elemental training until all of you can perform this Jutsu. We fight as a team and we lose as a team. He awoke five hours later by being nudged by his lone female student and was surprised to see fifteen shirkus and seven minos and six kens. He blinked twice olishly, he had not been expecting them to complete the jutsu today and was only still here as a show of support. What was another mildly amusing surprise was shirku, she kept surpassing his expectations and her control must have gone up again to be able to make fifteen clones like this. Holy shit, well done. You are never to use these clones to battle unless it is an ambush, they take too much chakra from the user and the memory feedback can be damaging. For the next two months you will continue your five laps around the village each morning but then you will come here to train. I will not be here since it is purely elemental training, I will give you scrolls and whatever else you need to do the training but you won't be learning jutsu anytime soon unless I decide you are ready. If you need help then come and find me. He said as he handed them each a scroll on the basics of their elements, he left Shirku with only lightning elemental training and told her to practice her shadow manipulation at home with her family. He left to spend some much needed time with his family. Things were looking up for Naruto in the past week, his dreams about his demise had all but come to a halt, his goddaughter was born two weeks prematurely but he didn't care and he all in all felt better than he had in a long time. He even made a breakthrough with his Susanoo training but that is a story for another time, so by the end of the second half decent week he had in a long time he knew something was going to happen soon and he could just tell that it was going to annoy the hell out of him. In light of his recent dreams he had the foresight to update his last will and testament and hand it into the current Hokage which got him a raised eyebrow from the Godain to which he replied that you can never be too careful. He sent double the amount of clones to finish his little training diary that he was creating which held all training schedules and activities that he had completed since his 8th birthday for his daughter and any more possible descendants in the future to help his clan and family prosper. He still hadn't gotten to see his brother yet and was starting to get rather concerned but was told by the Hokage that he was on a top secret S-class mission which annoyed him to no end. His daughter was now tree climbing. This was one of the highlights of his week to see his three-year-old daughter using chakra in such a way. Yugo had given birth to a healthy if not slightly small due to premature labor girl with purple hair like her own, it was still too early to tell if she had which features from either parent and the child was forced to stay in hospital until she grew enough to breathe on her own. Naruto was so happy for the couple that he even added them to his will which they didn't know but he gave them a house on the outskirts of Kanova that he had brought upon his return and sealed with several security seals so that they could live peacefully with their daughter and he even made sure that it had extra rooms and space to expand for their possibly growing family. 
Naruto was walking towards the training grounds to start his teams on their taijutsu practice with his style, he was looking forward to watching them squirm as they tried to learn his style of fighting when all of a sudden he disappeared in a poof of smoke. He opened his eyes and regained his bearings to see his senjutsu teachers in front of him smiling at him. Fukasaku-sama, Shima-sama, what is it you need of me today? He asked politely trying to hide the fact that he was slightly annoyed that he was now going to be late to meet his team. Fukasaku spoke first, the elder sage has had a new prophecy about you. This piqued his interest a little, he didn't like the fact that someone could tell what would happen in his life in the future but it was always an interesting point of view for him to try and understand. As they walked calmly across the home of the toads or in the toads case they jumped, Naruto asked any idea what this new prophecy is? None, the old toad is being extremely tight-lipped and is very serious. Shima replied. This response did not fill Naruto with much confidence, he had met the old toad once or twice before especially when he came here with Yujito when she was pregnant and the old toad prophesied that his daughter was destined for greatness which did make him happy but sad at the same time. After all, greatness rarely came without sadness right behind it, he knew that better than most. They soon reached a rather large cave entrance in the side of the mountain which is where the elder toad lived and relaxed whilst fulfilling his duty to the Gama clan. Tojiji, you called for me. He said sounding confident on the outside, but on the inside he hated this especially with every toad that was capable of walking in and Himayaboku looking at him. Who are you again? The elder toad asked whilst looking at him after a minute. Naruto palmed his face hard, this happened every goddamn time and it annoyed him to no end. Naruto. Ah, the child of prophecy. So I've been told. You called me here for a new prophecy. Ah, there was such a prophecy recently, it does not end well. Would you like to hear it? Sure, not like I have any choice since I'm here anyway. The elder's eyes glazed over like he was in a genjutsu and he sat up straighter that he was before speaking in a deadly serious voice. The child of prophecy's time is almost at an end. His job done. He will have changed this world for the better by the time of his death, but he will die all the same. Armies are uniting, moving against that which he holds dear and he will die protecting them, but as he dies the path of greatness that he lead will be opened for another his blood to follow. She will rebuild the world after he has changed it. He finished. Naruto stood still from shock for over five minutes before he spoke anything, well fuck. Are you sure I'm going to die? It had been foretold. I really dislike your prophecies now. I have a daughter that will grow up without a father because of this. Who is moving against what I hold dear? He said with anger finally showing in his voice. I cannot foresee that but I can see that at a collaboration effort, their forehead protectors simply say alliance. Tarifus. How long do I have? He asked in a dejected, defeated tone. Two months from what I have seen. He sighed and looked to Fukasaku, send me home. It was a command, not a request, he was in no mood to stay here right now. The toad nodded with sadness in his eyes, this was one of his students and he was going to die, he never liked this sort of prophecies. In a puff of smoke he was back where he left at the entrance to the training grounds, he walked over to his team, training is cancelled today, some important news has come up and I will be busy for the rest of the day. He said and left without giving them a chance to respond. He decided not to tell his family about this new prophecy and just enjoy his remaining time with them. His team were the same, he couldn't leave them without anything so he sent three reinforced clones to write copies of his ninjutsu journals for each of them, he even made a shadow jutsu journal for his female student. His dreams and this prophecy were too close, they must have been connected some way and he wasn't looking forward to it. He was after all one man, one overly powerful man but a man all the same. How on earth was he meant to stand up to an alliance of 20,000 strong on his own? He sure as hell wasn't going to involve his family, that was for sure. He was contemplating how his bijou could survive without him since they were linked in life and death, he had an idea about that, he hoped that he could modify the shiki fume that his father used and keep the power so the seal would remain active but her soul could be placed into an enhanced blood clone. 
She would be human in every sense of the word, she could grow old albeit with Uzumaki vitality, have kids of her own with someone she loved if she ever found someone and die like a human, she would be reborn anew after 30 to 40 years, but she would survive his death. And that brought some other troubling news back to his attention, the Sakatsuki group, he had no idea how Tsunade got a hold of information on them since his spy network had nothing but he was grateful, but he wasn't looking forward to fighting a bearer of the sage's eyes. He sent another clone off to work on this new Fuinjutsu whilst he had a nap, he was so tired and emotionally exhausted right now. He fell into what he hoped was a dreamless sleep so he could rest his mind and body but once again Kami just loved to fuck with him. A man stood in the center of the nine-tailed beasts, each looking younger and smaller than ever and each crying tears of fright, apparently this man was important to them. Shikako, Matatabi, Isabu, Sungoku, Kuko, Saiken, Chome, Gyuki, Kurama. You will never be alone. You will travel far and wide, do things humans can only dream of but you will never be alone. My descendant will dream of this, of you, he will face great hardships, but he will preserve her and throughout all of these hardships he will remain strong, he is my heir, he will change this world in ways that I never imagined and if the time comes when my Ninshu is turned into tools of war then he will show the world that one man can make a difference if he fights for the right cause. You are family, he is family and the world will know that family stands above all. He said whilst coughing some blood, his time nearing. Go forth and remember that he will save you all. Karama, watch him my daughter. He sat up suddenly sweating buckets and jumped out of bed. He had no idea of what the fuck that was but he was going to talk to his big sister about this. He found her watching Kushina from the porch and smiled, she is a wonderful child isn't she? Yes, she never seems to rest. So, Karama. That got her interest right away, she had forsaken that name years ago because the sage's prophecy never came true. How do you know that name? I saw it in a dream. So it's time. Time for what? That dream was real? Your name is Karama? In order, time for the prophecy the sage spoke of, yes it was real, a transcendent dream powered by the sage's eyes and yes my true name is Kamara however I forsook that name years ago when his prophecy never came. He checked to see if anyone was around and found it clear, he spoke in an even and clear tone. I want you to know the toads gave me a new prophecy. What of it? It spoke of my death in two months again a collaboration of ninja. An army protecting those which I hold dear. What? She said in a slightly raised voice, she liked this man and didn't want him to die. Shit happens you know? But I have no expectation to die that day and in accordance to this, prophecy I altered my seal recently just before I was called by the toads actually. I was having nightmares about me dying and if that happened then you would die as well and I needed someone I trust to protect my family should the worst happen so I changed the seal, you will live life as a human until your next death and it should take you twice as long to be reborn in demon form thus giving the world time to forget you and when you are reborn a chance at a new life. She said nothing, she was too surprised at what he had done for her. To her. He walked past her calmly, the calm of the man who knows what will happen in his life, the calm of a man who has accepted his death in the imminent future. Time skipped two weeks. Two weeks had passed since the day he spoken with, the now known, Karama, he spoke with the toad's blacksmith so that they can make him some armor reminiscent of a time long past, blood red metal plates like Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha's armor, the only difference was the fact that he had the kanji for oil printed onto its chest plate. He asked the toads to hold on to it for him and decided that he would make the most of his time remaining with his family, Itachi still hadn't returned home from his mission and he was beginning to get anxious for his big brother but he believed that if he needed the help then he would call. The most important thing that happened in the last two weeks was simply he got married to his beautiful wife Yujito Uchiha Namikaze. It was a small ceremony, he had promised her that they could marry again in a big ceremony at a later date but he had insisted that they marry as soon as possible. She didn't understand why but she trusted him and they were married that evening at sunset atop the Hokage monument with the Sandame Hokage providing over the ceremony. The paperwork was done and officially they were married. No one knew, not even his mother. 
His reason for this was simple. If he were to die then the custody of his child would go to Yujito which was fine, but if the elders suddenly grew a backbone and had her killed with some underhanded tactics, then the custody of his daughter would go to the state and with the state it would go to the elders who would use her as a weapon. Now that she was brought into his family, if she died it would go to either his mother or brother. Both he trusted with his life and both were too powerful to be assassinated unlike Yujido whose chakra network was still recovering from him holding the Nibi seal during their daughter's birth. Her chakra network should have been healed recently but it was still too early to rely on for their daughter's protection. His thought process was disturbed by an ANBU appearing before him in the kneeling position like for all clan heads. Naruto-sama, your presence is required by the Hokage. He finished and bowed his head before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. And so it begins. He thought he never talked to the Hokage much anymore because he was technically signed off on parental duties and her calling him was far too close to the date of his death for his comfort. Something had to start the war and he presumed it would be whatever she wanted him for. He sighed and flickered in a flash of red to the Hokage's tower. He walked past the secretary since he was requested by the Hokage and ignored her protests before walking into the Hokage's office and noticed her grim look. Naruto, follow me to the council chambers please. She said without any of her usual defiance that sounded in her voice when she spoke. He nodded and simply followed. Arriving at the council chambers he found the full council in session, even the elders and civilians were here and seated. He walked over to his seat and sat beside Hayashi Hyuga giving the man a brief nod. The Hokage soon spoke counselors, I have called you here today to say that we have received a letter from Kumobikure. She paused and noticed the discomfort on the faces of both Naruto and Hayashi. She understood about Hayashi but didn't understand Naruto. A five Kage summit had been called by Kumo in the Land of Iron. Naruto just sighed in resignation going unnoticed by all but Shikaku. The civilians in the room burst out speaking wondering what this was about and why now, the shinobi in the room just wondered why the civilians were even here to begin with and Naruto had his eyes closed. Eventually they quieted down enough for Shikaku to ask what reason have they called the summit for. The return of a missing Nin, Yuji Doni. Naruto's eyes snapped open as he flared his eternal Mangekyo Sharingan in anger. Before anyone could speak Naruto raised his hand to silence all protests. I'm sorry, I don't know a Yujito ni. Last week I married a Yujito Uchiha Namikaze, if that helps. He said providing the documentation for the rest of the council to read and therefore stopping any attempts by the civilians and elders to hand her over to stop war. War was going to happen one way or another. He looked directly at Tsunade this time, I will be accompanying you to the summit since it's my family they want. He spoke with finality getting a nod from the woman, it made sense after all. A stupid civilian counselor spoke up please Naruto-sama, you have to understand this is war we are looking at if they don't get her back in. He stopped when he felt a massive ki coming from Naruto aimed directly at him. Know your place civilian. He spat the last word venomously before tripling his KI levels to unregistered levels and making the civilian temporarily stop breathing before passing out. My wife and daughter will remain here, in Kanoha, by my side. If Kumo want a war then they will find out just how dangerous I can be when pushed, I will search for them, I will hunt them and I will destroy them. Last thing to say before I go, I formally hand in the paperwork to adopt Yuga Yuzuki and Hei 8 Geku into the Namikaze clan. Should I die, Yuga will take over as Namikaze clan head until my child is either of age or mentality to lead. He finished standing up. I will meet you at the gate in two hours Lady Tsunade. He said before flashing home. His mother, daughter and wife were at the hot springs apparently so he left a note and grabbed his gear before leaving to meet Tsunade at the gate. One month since this war started, one month since I attended the Five Kage Summit since my family was involved. We are alone in this. No one is going to save us and most of us haven't the strength to save ourselves. I do but I must wait whilst, whilst my comrades die I wait for the time when I shall show the world true power. IWA, Kumo, Odo and several minor villages stand against us and we are losing ground fast. Suna can't involve itself in a war where they know they will lose and have abandoned us to our devices, our deaths. 
The enemy seem to be gearing up for something big and I know it will be the end of me. Men that are being killed on the battlefield turn out to be clones, some new type of shadow clone that can take several hits and cost less chakra to make. It worries me who could make a technique such as this, but I know it was that snake. It is about time I go to my death, two months is almost up and I've trained the most possible. I've even started to reuse my old gravity and restriction seals not to mention a new seal for chakra control that I made just before the summit that recycles wasted chakra into my coils expanding them even further than they are already and messing with my chakra flow. I am now proud to say that I have as much chakra as the Nibi who I am sure to face in the upcoming battle after all she was stolen by Kumo before me and Yujido got together. It was pure luck that I saved her. All my students have had this seal for half a month before they were sent to the front lines and are quickly becoming well known in the leaf. Apparently my hellish training has prepared them enough to survive, each are known as prodigies now and are being assigned tougher missions that Jonan tend to do alone. I am so proud. My beloved wife sends me worried glances every morning, like she somehow knows it will soon be my last and I am so terribly sorry for the pain that I will cause her. The nightmares come more frequently now that I know I am going to die, it makes so little sense. This is my last entry to my diary, only my blood can open it so if you my daughter find this one day and read upon my many failures as a human and an adult know one thing. I have only ever done one thing right in my life and you are it, I love you and will be waiting for you. Love, Naruto Uchiha Namikaze General P.O.V Naruto placed his diary on the bedside cabinet whilst locking it with the normal seals, he had finished cataloging every training regiment, jutsu and training equipment almost a month ago and the only technique he had made since then was his last. A suicide technique in case he couldn't win against the odds he would face soon. He was about to go and eat with his family when an ANBU operative appeared before him, Naruto-sama, the council is being gathered. He simply nodded in understanding and sighed as the ANBU left, today he was sure was going to be one of his last alive. He got dressed and flashed to the marker he placed on his seat in the council, they were all waiting for him. Thank you all for coming so quickly. Tsunade started, the civilian council had been disbanded upon wartime protocols and was most likely never going to be remade much to his amusement and enjoyment. All council members nodded when addressed, this was wartime not the time to mince words. We have all been getting the reports of the Tri-Alliance forces turning into clones when killed on the fronts, Jiraiya's spy network has explained that mystery, the Alliance are mounting their forces for a campaign leading from Odo to Kanoa for a final decisive strike to try and win this war before we get a chance to do some damage. She finished. All members except Naruto stood up in outrage, they were outnumbered and they knew it. If such a force attacked, then Kanoha was seriously done for. He sighed and snapped his fingers twice to place a quick genjutsu on everyone. One put Tsunade to sleep whilst the other muted the room. He stood and walked to the center. I muted you. Why? Because I need to speak without you talking. I was contacted two months ago by the seer of the Gama clan. Jiraiya knows this but he doesn't know why. They predicted my death against an army but I done so much damage to said army that they lost. I will deal with this threat to my family and you need not worry. Tsunade will wake up in roughly 12 hours which according to my spy network is when they will be just crossing into fire territory near the valley of the end. Give this scroll to her, I've already sent a toad with a scroll such as this to each of the great five. IT contains my greatest space-time fuinjutsu I've ever made. A real-time projection of the battle will be displayed for you to all watch. He finished as he snapped his fingers against dismissing the second genjutsu. They all blinked at him, but Shikaku was first to speak. Troublesome, what about your family? The world will know not to mess with them after this, not to mention severely weakened so they won't attack and I've left training regiments for my daughter and wife once she recovers from birth which should be within a month. No one had anything to say to that as he bit his thumb and summoned Fukasaku, the toad elder. It's time. He said before the toad could say anything which caused him to stiffen. Bring me my battle armor and scroll. He said with finality allowing the toad to pop away only to come back seconds later with a mannequin covered by red armor reminiscent of the Warring States era. 
It had the kanji for oil on its chest plate showing his allegiance to the Gama clan. The scroll was twice the size of the Gama clan's summoning scroll, within it contained his weapons and seals he had already prepared in advance for his death. He knew he was going to die but he was damned if he let them have it easily. He came to this meeting dressed for the occasion in a Warring States era Uchiha battle robe which was taped around his ankles and had the Uchiha fan on its back. He walked over to the armor and let a small smile run across his face as he placed it on before tying it tight so it wouldn't come loose in battle. He then proceeded to take the scroll and unseal his battle fan and placed it on his back. He crossed his arms and looked at the council who were in shock, he looked like Madara down to his smirk in every history book. He turned and walked away with a clang in every step he took. As he walked towards the gates people were giving him wide berth on the streets, the shinobi could sense the power of his aura as a warning and he was intimidating all else. He was a man walking to his death high and proud. It took him a total of six hours to reach his destination, he didn't want to be tired so he didn't rush and had a gentle run to his final resting place. He stood atop Hashirama's statue at the Valley of the End. A fitting place he mused to himself. He had kept Fukasaku with him and had the elders summon toads for him since he didn't want to waste chakra at this point. Each toad knew its place and knew what to do. They went to work trapping the field with several seals he made for today. The list was huge, elemental seals, Horatian seals, gravity well seals and many more. He had researched his enemies and found out what he needed to know, the Rakage was a Nin Taijutsu user and hardly ever used right Tunjutsu apart from his armor that was passed on to him by his father. Naruto considered his brother a bigger threat in the long run, a fully synced Jinshuriki host with stamina and reserves to match. Oto? Well they were just a bunch of missing Nin with Sasuke and Orochimaru unless of course the snake took Sasuke's body in advance for this fight which was highly probable. He snorted at the idea. It was too late to save his cousin now and he didn't really care to be honest, he had made his bed and had to lay in it. IWA was next, an old man with years of experience, not one to underestimate but Genjutsu and Taijutsu should be more than adequate to take him since he is too old to move fast enough and his Genjutsu was top notch. He sat down and waited for his toads to apply all the seals, he felt every single Horatian seal on the field behind Madara's statue. Each had a piece of his chakra in. The ground started shaking all too soon, he thought it was an earthquake for a minute but then he realized that it was the army he was to stand against, the largest gathered in history. He nodded to Fukasaku who proceeded to summon the big three who were all clad in iron armor for war in Shima. Both elders sat atop his shoulders. Gamakichi was unfortunately not allowed to wage war with them since he was the Gama clan's heir. He waited and waited, twenty minutes later he stood in front of a much more deadly army than the prophecy suggested, he laughed inwardly, it was like Kami was trying to kill him for having ideas of ignoring this. Standing to the front were the Kage of their respective villages, what he noticed though was that the Mizukage and Kazekage were both in attendance. He snorted out loud, those fools had just damned their villages. Something caught his eye though, his brother standing opposite him wearing a black cloak with red clouds. He felt slightly hurt at this. He locked eyes with him and placed him in a genjutsu he knew his brother couldn't break. So this is where you have been. Neither said a word for several minutes. Explain to me brother now, before I make Kusen lose a son. He said with an edge to his tone. Tsunade sent me to infiltrate a criminal organization that were hunting the bijou. Fool, when the fighting starts leave this place at once. You are not needed on this battlefield, brother. This got a wide-eyed reaction from Itachi which was saying a lot considering who he was. Eventually he nodded in return and smiled at his brother. The genjutsu faded and he stared out at the amassed army. What is this? Suna betrayed us again, I will have to make sure that the pit stain of a village is wiped off the map. I see four kage and one, two, three. 10 S ranked Nupnin in front of me. Oh, Sasuke is here too in Kabuto, but where is Orochimaru team? Why standing right here, Naruto Kuun Kukuku? He laughed heavily. So Sasuke finally sold his soul. Fool, he will never find out what happened that night now. 
so how are we going to do this? The rakage stepped up, how about you stand there and die? Fully you started this war in an attempt to take my family from me, I will take yours instead. He said with a dark edge to his voice as he held a ram sign with both his hands and said Kai. Releasing toad oil all over the battlefield. Shima, light them up. He ordered. She nodded all the rather hesitantly as she burned 2,000 men alive leaving the 50,000 strong army down to 48,000. He knew the only people he had to watch out for were the Kaget and the S-rankers in the group, the others could be dealt with easily enough. He nodded to Itachi which was the signal to flee but before he did his brother set six men afire with black flames, he had no idea who they were but they all had a pair of eyes he recognized as the legendary dojitsu of the Sage of Six Paths. He silently thanked his brother as he sensed him running away. Witness what you have brought upon yourselves. Witness what will happen to any that threaten my family and my line. Witness hell. He shouted and he held the ram sign and his eyes turned into the EMS before Susanoo appeared covering all three battle toads in armor as they attacked. All three toads jumped forwards as he leapt off their heads. The Kaget stood still as they watched this onslaught. Their men were falling by the minute but before they could do anything Naruto roared in defiance as his EMS shunned bright red before a fourth Susanoo appeared around him except this one was shaped as a fox. A fox with nine tails swishing behind him. Naruto stood in its head on a gem whilst panting. He hardly ever got to practice this form anymore and it took a lot of chakra to manifest not to mention the mental strain of having four Susanoo active at once. The QB Susanoo roared forwards in an attempt to damage the enemies but before he could he was caught in eight tails of tentacles from an ox-like creature who was rhyming badly. Sorry yo, but bro says you gotta go. The ox yelled. Naruto recognized this immediately as Gyuki the Hachibi, partner to Killer B of the A and B combo. He said nothing as he stared into the beast's eyes and was dragged into the mindscape. The Hachibi was wandering around a turtle island which got a raised eyebrow. What are you doing here fool? He looked to his right to see Killer B. Your brother wants to take my family away from me so I shall take his for a little while and see how he likes it. Spikes of metal were immediately stabbed into Killer B. Genjutsu doesn't work on you because of the Hachibi but inside the mindscape is another thing altogether isn't it? His chakra can't reach you as long as I'm here. He said as he walked towards the Hachibi. What do you want, human? I'm borrowing you for a while. He said whilst he locked eyes with Gyuki and said obey. A Sharingan pattern entered his white eyes and he bowed to Naruto who turned back to be. Watch from there as you slaughter your friends and family because your foolish brother sought a war that he wished he could win. He said as he left the mindscape. Outside in the real world the Hachibi let his tentacles loosen as he turned to face the army with a Sharingan in his eyes showing them to their horror that he was under Sharingan control. He let his Susanoo drop due to the fact that his chakra was burning up at too high a rate. He had already used a quarter of his reserves and couldn't shield the toads anymore, Susanoo put a huge strain on his body and eyes even with his EMS. He coughed a bit of blood into his hands. The army was in chaos trying to stop the battle toads. By the time they had managed to land a reasonable hit on the toads and dispel them the army was down to just over 30,000. More than enough to kill him he thought. The Kage were all staring at him still like they were trying to figure out a puzzle. He formed three slow hand signs so they could see. Inu, Tora, Hijitsu he held the last sign for three seconds and they all sensed a medium-sized chakra output from him. What did you do? I had a clone infiltrate each and every one on of your villages before this fight and placed a seal in the main square of each. This seal is a new space-time one that I made based on my father's oration and it transports live images in real time so everyone in your village is going to watch this battle. Why? A message for all the years to come, for all your descendants and for anyone who thinks they can hurt those precious to me. My family is protected. Witness the rebirth of the Flash. He said whilst disappearing to one of the pre-made seals and beginning the onslaught of death. He stopped when he felt too dizzy to continue but the army had been cut down to around 10,000. 
He had enough chakra to enter sage mode, but anything more would be pushing it. He had to begin to pull on Kurama's leftover chakra in his seal soon, or he would die. Kabuto. Do it. Orochimaru ordered quickly, he didn't want to die, and it was clear that Naruto wasn't playing around anymore. Kabuto quickly nodded and went through some hand signs, Kuchios, Edo Tensei he shouted and a coffin rose above ground. Naruto raised an eyebrow at this and against his better judgment allowed it to rise and open. When the coffin opened all around the field of battle you could literally hear Naruto slap his palm to his face. Out stepped the founder of his clan, Madara Uchiha. Oh this should be good. He muttered to himself in sarcasm. Naruto sighed as he saw Madara look around. Where am I? You are at the Valley of the End, and you are going to fight for us. Madara turned his head towards Orochimaru with a raised eyebrow. You want me to dance? That is fine, but I am no one's puppet, more like the puppet instructor. He said grinning savagely. But before that I must check something. He said whilst going through hand seals, Kuchios no Jutsu. A large summoning circle appeared on the ground and Naruto held his stomach as he felt like a part of him was tearing away from himself. Kurama appeared in all her glory as a several-story tall fox with nine tails, immediately upon seeing this she tried to swipe her tails towards Madara whilst using the others to help Naruto kill the army, she stopped once Madara looked her in the eye and cast his genjutsu on her. The army was down to 5,000 but he still had to deal with the heavy hitters not to mention a resurrected Madara and Kyubi that seemed to be at full power even though he was sure he took her power away when he released her from the Shinigami's contract. He could feel his battle lust growing at the sight in front of him, his lust for battle had been tamed and severely decreased upon becoming a father, which he was grateful for. He looked up towards Madara who was staring back at him impassively like he was no threat. Want to dance? Madara perked up immediately upon hearing his catch line being used by another and grinned, he could tell this person was strong. He activated his EMS and said, yes, why yes I do, what is your name? Naruto activated his own EMS while releasing the same grin as Madara. Naruto Uchiha Namikaze. He said, grinning like a loon. Madara nodded and jumped upon Kurama's head whilst Naruto sped towards them with his gun by in his right hand. He knew he stood no chance at beating the Kyubi in her full form now that she had all her power back and he wasn't too fond of the idea of sealing her in something again or the fact that the only seal he knew capable of it without enough preparation was the same one his father used and he wasn't wanting to meet the Shinigami anytime soon. He decided to use the enemy's power against them, with his speed he sped towards the S-rankers of the enemies and charged his feet with lightning chakra to bypass the Kazakage's sand before kicking him hard in the chest and sending him towards the Kyubi's incoming paw. The paw did not stop and with great speed tried to slam into Naruto before he could jump out of the way, the paw also slammed the Kazakage into the ground, all other ninja around the area jumped out of the way before anything could happen. One down. Naruto said as he rushed towards the army, his speed was matched by the Rakage who was contesting him in a fierce taijutsu battle, Naruto decided that the Rakage was worthy of a tiny amount of respect since he could keep up with him. He grinned as he immediately started to release his bloodlust in concentrated KI that would make younger ninja faint. The Rakage knocked him back towards the army hitting several of the remaining men and sending the flying before using his center of gravity to flip his body over and begin to land. Before he could land however several small clay bats swarmed around him and began to explode, he did the only sensible thing he could do and used an E-rank jutsu to substitute with an enemy near him. And he said praise the log and he shall provide. Naruto said before the rakage was upon him again cloaked in a vast lightning cloak that improved his stats all round. The rakage was quicker than him, he would admit, but he didn't only have speed so before the rakage could do anything Naruto locked eyes with him and placed him under the same genjutsu as Killer B. Metal spikes impaled his body for a split second before he cancelled the genjutsu but it was too late, Naruto was already in front of him and kicked him at high speed towards the Mizukage who was going through several hand signs. 
Before she was hit she sprayed a wall of lava outwards towards where Naruto was going to be but the rakage had intercepted it before anything could happen and a scream was heard throughout the battlefield as the rakage stood to his feet clutching what used to be his left hand but was now just a piece of cauterized flesh. Naruto raised an eyebrow that looked like it hurt. He asked with a lopsided smirk. T-E-M-E. -E. A roar before charging Naruto. His Sharingan detected a large amount of Suetun Chakra built up behind him and he looked then smirked thinking that these fools couldn't do a better job of taking each other out. He baited the rakage to chase him and at the last second moved to the right so the rakage would go face first with a lightning cloak into a fully formed water dragon from the Mizukage. That should keep him down for a while, now to deal with you fools. He said as he looked to his right, Madara was still atop the Kyuubi's head whilst the Hachibi tried to contain her. The remaining Akatsuki were standing patiently for him to finish with the Kage, the fools should have attacked when they had the chance. Two things caught his eye suddenly, one of the Akatsuki people were gone, the lone female of the group, but he guessed she retreated for some reason and there was another Uchiha amongst them with the Mangekyo awakened and turned on. You Uchiha! What is your name? Toby. Lies, there hasn't been a Toby Uchiha since the Warring States. What is your name? How do you know I'm an Uchiha? Your eyes have fully developed chakra pathways behind them indicating you've had them for a very long time, you seem to have a Mangekyo Sharingan active and considering the drain of a regular Sharingan for a non-Uchiha you would be dead if you weren't of Uchiha blood. Curious though, as to how you aren't blind yet? It's not an eternal Mangekyo so you should be blind from overuse yet you look me in the eye when speaking to you? I have an eternal. He roared in anger at having some of his secrets revealed to the world. No, no you do not. The pattern isn't overlapping with another Sharingan meaning it's not eternal. You have something to hold back the blindness, though don't you? It's on the tip of my senses a powerful chakra not unlike mine from the Uzumaki side of my heritage, but it's barely contained inside you. Tell me what is it? The rest of the Akatsuki were listening in as they were interested as well to know about their mysterious leader. It feels like Senju, but the only Senju to have such a strong life force that it could rival an Uzumaki is long since dead meaning you defiled his grave, the grave of Hashirama. You will die for that, he was one of the only men I can respect even in death, prepare yourself for your death will not be quick and it will not be pleasant. He said before staring at Haydn who suddenly combusted into black flames and was rolling on the floor trying to get rid of them. Daidara was an easy target as he was scared shitless of any right ton user which he took advantage of and used an advanced form of the Chidori he had seen his cousin use called Chidori Senban. Hundreds of Senban needles made out of right ton chakra pierced the clay constructs making them explode prematurely. The unlucky part was when several of the needles pierced his clay that had already been charged with his chakra ahead of battle to conserve his own and exploded ending the life of Daidara, the mad bomber. Before he could congratulate himself mentally he saw a white box surround himself and cursed, he vanished in a flash like his father before him and appeared beside a pre-made marker that was behind the Mizukage who was currently going through several hand seals and sliced her neck quickly proving to all those watching just why he was a Kage-level shinobi to be feared. He was completely ignoring the 2,000 men left from the original army that were just staring at the fight in fascination after all it wasn't often that you could watch most of the S-ranked criminals and kages of the world fighting one person who was S to SS rank themselves. Naruto was starting to breath a bit heavier now, the use of Horatian and his speed were taking a toll on his already drained stamina and body but he wouldn't give up. Kisame and Sasori were next on his hit list. He was saving the Uchiha for last and he didn't want him dying too soon. He rushed towards Sasori having read about him in the bingo books of old and new, both said he used poison Senban needles that were nigh impossible to cure unless you were Sanade. He needed that poison for the next part of his plan unfortunately it was impossible to find unless Sasori gave it willingly or he gave you one of his coated weapons. As expected the human puppet fired a volley of Sunban needles towards him hoping to either stop or redirect his advance and give him time to take out some puppets from scrolls. Naruto had no intention of giving him the time he wanted and ran at speeds that Shinobi were envious of with a blue ball in his hand and smashed it into the puppet aiming hopefully somewhere for the chest on the puppet that was inside since he knew now thanks to Itachi what this abomination was. 
What no one saw was Naruto taking ten of the Sinbon needles from his weapon's cache before storing them away in his own cache. He had used a lot of chakra already and he was down to about half and that included the remaining chakra from his old tenant which he was using to bolster and strengthen his muscles so his body didn't collapse from lack of stamina, he couldn't stop because he was afraid that once he did he would fall and lose. Naruto had watched Sasori use the chakra strings with his Sharingan and as the puppet underneath flew away at breakneck speeds he attached a thick but durable line of chakra to the chest piece in the puppet before pulling it towards him with a firm pull and threw a kunai towards the oncoming chest piece. Panting even harder now he flipped over a slash at his legs from Kisame and threw all ten Senban needles at his back hoping that Samahata wouldn't be able to flush the poison anytime soon. He was happy when all ten hit but disappointed when Kisame dropped Samahata and fell to the floor either dead or unconscious he didn't check. These were the S-class criminals that all nations were so afraid of? What had happened to the world to become so weak? That such a kid tried again to fire a dust-release jutsu at Naruto whilst he wasn't paying attention but paid the price for it when his back cramped and he screamed in a startled surprise before Naruto ended his life with a wind-enhanced kunai. The Akatsuki were falling quickly and fast. Toby was all that remained, and it seemed that this Setsu creature his brother spoke of disappeared like the wind, but before he could attack the rogue Uchiha Orochimaru in Sasuke's body appeared. Orochimaru. He hissed, is my cousin still in there? Oh yes, he's watching right now and listening. Let him know I tried to reason with him before, but he was too stuck on revenge against a soon-to-be dead man. Danzo has left the battlefield once I started killing the Akatsuki and left his men to the slaughter, but if he wants revenge for what happened that night then I will show him what happened since I was there. He locked eyes with Orochimaru and he found himself tied to a cross in a Jinjutsu world. Watch what happened that night before I kill you. Orochimaru and Sasuke both watched Naruto and Itachi exterminate the clan and the events leading up to it and the aftermath for 72 hours. Both were drained mentally because of the time frame that the Genjutsu lasted for. In the real world they stopped moving except Naruto sliced Sasuke's throat and mumbled apologies mother. He turned his eyes towards the rogue Uchiha who stood smirking. Little Uchiha, you don't seem to be S-ranked from what I have seen of you. From my brother's information on your little group, the only weapon you have is your little Kamui trick from your Mangekyo, and being a Mangekyo user myself I know something that powerful has downsides such as the strain on the eyes and body. I bet you haven't even unlocked the third power yet have you? Your Taijutsu must be bad since you haven't fought in a long time and your Ninjutsu will be quite good considering you are an Achiha by birth same as the Jinjutsu but I wonder if we reach an impasse such as this what will happen if I lock space-time Ninjutsu from our fight? This got a bead of sweat rolling down the man's temple behind the mask. He was hoping he didn't know how to do that because it would be bad. Before he could think further Naruto was flashing through several hand seals that were unidentifiable to him. Behold the limit of my inheritance from the Uzumaki clan. He shouted as large black kanji appeared in the air making a dome around them. The real reason Uzumaki were feared was not their kenjutsu but their few ones. They had a style that the main house of Uzumaki could use and create seals in the air and manifest chakra like constructs. I am the last Uzumaki and I doubt my children will inherit my Uzumaki chakra or skills beyond any average shinobi. Prepare yourself for I want to see how you dance without your little tricks. He said and charged at the man. It soon became apparent that what Naruto said about the Uchiha was true, his taijutsu whilst mid-jonin level was nothing compared to his and the few ninjutsu he used were fire-related because he never bothered to learn anything else. Arrogance he did manage to capture Naruto in a genjutsu for about half a second which saved his head, but earned him a nasty cut to the mask slicing the bottom half of it off. Naruto was surprised, this man didn't seem the genjutsu type like other Uchiha, but he grinned like a madman as he smashed through it and attacked. Eventually, the rogue Uchiha was on the floor panting and about to get killed when Naruto turned to get a sucker punch to the face sending him about 200 meters back and rolled several times. The unexpected attack made him lose concentration on the seal that was quickly draining his chakra and the Uchiha disappeared in his little space-time ninjutsu to fight another day. Naruto grunted as he got up, the top half of his armor served him well but it was torn off by the fighting leaving him shirtless. He looked up to see the rakage, 
you're up earlier than I thought. They heard a boom and looked over to see Killer Bee being transformed back into his human state with multiple cuts and bruises on his body with his right arm hanging by a thread of bone and skin. You want your brother to survive? A nodded. Take him and leave, I have no time for you anymore, but next time listen to your brother when he warns you against something you pig-headed fool or I will wipe Kumo from the map. As it stands now Kumo is now one of the weakest of the great five due to me slaughtering your armies all day. He finished with a wicked grin that sent a shiver down the rakage spine. The rakage nodded and took his brother away quickly leaving two thousand men, Naruto, Madara and Kyubi in her full form. It's almost time now. He muttered hoping his family would forgive him, he was running on empty as it was and now he wasn't sure if he had the strength to survive this battle, he had done much more damage than the prophecy originally stated and faced much worse odds but knowing his family would be safe after this was a great load off his back. He looked over at Madara atop the bijou's head and growled, he didn't like that he considered Kurama family and let he be controlled. You dance well Naruto. Madara said with a true smile and using his name to show his respect for the man before him, I dare say that had I been alive you would have killed me once we fought, but that's one of the perks of being dead isn't it? I can't die again. I'll take that as a compliment. Naruto said before Madara charged him for the first time, they began a fierce battle of taijutsu that could be called kage level, but as soon as it started it slowed showing how tired Naruto was, it wasn't long before Madara had the lead. What he didn't know was that Naruto wasn't fighting for the win but rather a change to land an open palm to the chest which he got soon enough and said contract seal. Several lines of fuin spread across Madara's chest and the Kyuubi's eyes went back to normal, he jumped away before shouting leave Kurama. This is not your fight. He said before getting a kick to the face by an angry undead Uchiha, Kurama looked conflicted but when she saw Madara start to look at her to control her again she disappeared to give Naruto a fighting chance. Naruto stood up slowly as Madara approached him, you took my pet from me, you will have to be punished now. Naruto shakily got to his feet and spoke in a voice full of sadness as he ignored the fight with the Uchiha and continued blocking his fists and kicks automatically like a robot as he spoke. Kushina, remember these words for they may be the last I will ever speak to you. I love you and your mother so much, I've always had a hole in my heart that your grandmother and uncle tried to fill the best they could but it never worked, the social stigma I received when I was younger carried over to my adult years and for what it's worth cousin I apologize. I tried to be a good father to you but I had no idea on how to do it with not having one myself when growing up, you and your mother fill me with a will to fight that I've never had before, I've fought countless enemies in my younger days as I courted war to test my strength but I stopped caring when you came into my life. The toads will come for you like they did me Kushina, do not sign their contract, I will not have my daughter under the same pressure that I was under due to their prophecies if you need to learn sage mode just ask Kurama, she was with me when I learnt and so was your mother but only Kurama knows the ins and outs of sage mode. Practice well and become a force to be reckoned with. I'm sorry I will never get to beat the boys who you bring home down with my fatherly fist of love to show those scum that they aren't worth you but I'm sure you will find someone in the end. Naruto said as he felt his arm leave his body. He looked down to his right and bit his lip to stop him screaming, he was losing big time and now he was bleeding just as bad. He continued to talk to his daughter although he was panting from the pain. You will never be alone Kushina. You have two sisters on the way and I doubt your mother knows this, but take care of them, they will look to you since I am not around to guide them. One last thing to say, when you are in your darkest moment in life and you see no way to survive or help those you love and would do anything to save them, to protect them, hug the necklace I gave you close to your chest and pray for a miracle and I shall come. Death will not stop me, I will make it fear me in order to save you. Yujito, no words need spoke between us my love. Naruto finished as he was getting beaten constantly and the crowd of just over 2,000 shinobi were cheering for Madara. Naruto fell over exhausted as he looked over Madara grinning at him, fools they don't realize that they are next. Madara just shrugged not really caring, you were a good opponent and fought well considering your accomplishments today, I look forward to facing you in the afterlife. Naruto just chuckled getting a raised eyebrow from Madara. I'm not done yet. He said as he was coughing some blood. 
He thought and concentrated hard on the flow of his chakra, he still had enough to enter sage mode from earlier and did so for the boost for his last jutsu. He released the first two Hashiman gates giving himself a noticeable gain in strength allowing him to stand tall and proud before he placed his closed fist over his heart and smirked. I think I will die on my feet rather than on my knees. Gaining a smirk from Madara boosting his respect for the blonde shinobi more but before he could do anything Naruto continued. Simon, Shoman, Taman, Kaimon, Kaiman Kai. Seven gates released one after another blasting away several shinobi, Madara just stared unimpressed, he wasn't moving so he doubted he could and you didn't need to have a body in good condition to open the Hashiman gates as long as you didn't move. You know earlier when I used the contract seal on you? He asked getting an interesting nod from Madara. You are technically a summon yourself so I cut the connection between Kabuto and you which also cut the connection to the chakra that your body used to regenerate, you just haven't noticed yet. That was interesting to know Madara thought. Still it does nothing you are barely standing and you don't look like you can fight anytime soon. Watch me, Shimon. K-A-I-I. He screamed as his aura bled into a bright red mist showing the eighth gate had been released, his muscles bulged under stress. I have minutes to live now, but I want you to know something, I want the world to know something. This war could have been easily avoided had man not wanted more, this world will burn because man wants more and I won't be here to stop it a second time. The world in Madara watched on in interest as Naruto crouched down into the horse stance and screamed at the top of his lungs, I do this for you my queen. He shot it obviously referring to Yujido, a slash N, 300 movies reference GG. A dome of energy spread out miles upon mile until it stopped 50 miles from Naruto's current position and faded, leaving nothing but a crater in the ground and countless bodies. Madara had been disintegrated and Naruto stood panting as he slowly closed his eyes, I'll be waiting. He said softly falling to the ground. What he didn't know was that several Kanoha ninja were closing on his position to help him if needed and recover his body if he had already been killed and were just beyond the blast radius. They sped up and arrived just after Naruto fell forwards into an eternal sleep waiting for the day when his family needed him again. He was buried in the Uchiha crypt and had preservation seals placed on him to stop his body decomposing and the tomb was sealed only to be unlocked from the inside as per his request in his final will and testament. Years would pass as our hero slept away peacefully in the afterlife waiting with his parents and friends he thought he would never see again, waiting and watching the world, watching his daughter's life and his wife and she stayed a widow and hadn't move on. Watched as his wife gave birth to a healthy set of twin sisters. He waited for the call that would come, he waited for when his daughter needed him the most. The day came and he had to say that he was proud of her. Whilst she wasn't at his skill level for her age she was pretty damn close and was just a little worse off than him when it came to genjutsu. His other daughters were both tai and ninjutsu freaks creating new ninjutsu and taijutsu just like him leading their clans to new prestige. His brother had settled down with the ramen chef from his younger years I am and had a kid of his own, a son who was next in line after Naruto's children to heir of the Uchiha clan. Kurama watched his children and family from afar. Apparently she had her power back after being summoned and felt it was best to not get attached in case they died and she lived on but continued to protect them as a last promise to him her first true friend. Now he found his three daughters standing in triangle formation in front of a massive army of every ninja and samurai on the planet facing off against a reincarnated Madara and the rogue Uchiha from his last battle. Things would be alright if it was just them, all three of his daughter could handle them together but they had to split their attention between him the rogue Uchiha and the Jubi that somehow reformed which confused him to no end. He watched his daughter reach for her necklace, Tuchan, I know you can hear me, you never go back on your word and I need you right now, we need you right now. Help me and my sisters defend that which we hold dear. Naruto smiled, his little princess had matured greatly over the years and he couldn't be more proud of her. He stood from the log that he was sat on around the campfire in the pitch black with Sakumo Hataki and smiled. It's time. He said as he glowed brightly and disappeared. In the real world his body shimmered in and out of existence showing his used a forbidden kenjutsu from his clan at the cost of an eye called Inzanaji, he reformed with his arm and one pure white eye showing it was dead, he was happy that he still felt some of Kurama's chakra within him and the seals he had on at his time of death were still intact. 
He only had minutes before he would be needed on the battlefield and he felt it 100%. He unsealed a Mangekyo Sharingonite that he had stored on his body for years since the Uchiha massacre, the Eye of Uchiha Shursui. He pulled out his eye and placed the other in his socket and used sage mode and what little of Kurama's chakra he had left to heal it. Time to dance. He said, before disappearing in a flash and landing on the battlefield, deflecting one of the hands of the Jubi from killing his children into the ground next to them causing smoke to appear around him and them obscuring them from the armies and Madara's vision. As the smoke began to clear he stood tall and proud topless as the day he had died, his outline surprised a lot of them because they didn't see anyone stand in front of the kids to take the blow. I told you I would be back Madara. A voice range across the battlefield stopping all fights, several people recognized this voice from a live broadcast years ago when he thought an army. No way. A mist shinobi said. It can't be. A lightning shinobi screamed. Get him away. Lastly a Suna shinobi said obviously seeing something others weren't. The smoke cleared completely and Naruto stood still with his arms across his chest smirking at Madara atop the jubi. He stopped smirking when he heard a voice from behind him. Tu-chan? An uncertain Kushina voiced. He turned his head to face her and smiled a truly genuine smile towards her and her sisters. Stay here girls, it's not your time to fight something so strong yet. Let your Tu-san show you how we do it old school, eh? He smiled ignoring the fact that they were only now a few years chronologically younger than him. They nodded and his face turned serious as he faced Madara, his eyes bled into the EMS and a perfect Sasano appeared around him with him standing in the gem on its head. His daughter all stared at it in awe. Yes they each had the EMS as they had swapped one eye with another of the siblings and yes they could each use Susano, but none of his children ever took it as far as he did. His Susano's face suddenly tripled and one turned to the left and one to the right as four new arms sprung from its body, each holding a weapon. I told you I would be back Madara and now you seem to be alive, let's see how well you dance when I am dancing fresh, shall we Madara? Madara smiled a small genuine smile like he did all those years ago when he was revived with Edo Tensai, yes. Let's. He shouted. Do you want to dance Madara? What no one saw was Naruto taking ten of the Sinban needles from his weapon's cache before storing them away in his own cache. He had used a lot of chakra already and he was down to about half and that included the remaining chakra from his old tenant which he was using to bolster and strengthen his muscles so his body didn't collapse from lack of stamina, he couldn't stop because he was afraid that once he did he would fall and lose. Naruto had watched Sasori use the chakra strings with his Sharingan and as the puppet underneath flew away at breakneck speeds he attached a thick but durable line of chakra to the chest piece in the puppet before pulling it towards him with a firm pull and threw a kunai towards the oncoming chest piece. Panting even harder now he flipped over a slash at his legs from Kisame and threw all ten Senban needles at his back hoping that Samahata wouldn't be able to flush the poison anytime soon. He was happy when all ten hit but disappointed when Kisame dropped Samahata and fell to the floor either dead or unconscious he didn't check. These were the S-class criminals that all nations were so afraid of? What had happened to the world to become so weak? That such a kid tried again to fire a dust release jutsu at Naruto whilst he wasn't paying attention but paid the price for it when his back cramped and he screamed in a startled surprise before Naruto ended his life with a wind-enhanced kunai. The Akatsuki were falling quickly and fast. Toby was all that remained, and it seemed that this Setsu creature his brother spoke of disappeared like the wind, but before he could attack the rogue Uchiha Orochimaru in Sasuke's body appeared. Orochimaru. He hissed, is my cousin still in there? Oh yes, he's watching right now and listening. Let him know I tried to reason with him before, but he was too stuck on revenge against a soon-to-be-dead man. Danzo has left the battlefield once I started killing the Yakutsuki and left his men to the slaughter, but if he wants revenge for what happened that night then I will show him what happened since I was there. He locked eyes with Orochimaru and he found himself tied to a cross in a Jinjutsu world. Watch what happened that night before I kill you. Orochimaru and Sasuke both watched Naruto and Itachi exterminate the clan and the events leading up to it and the aftermath for 72 hours. Both were drained mentally because of the time frame that the Genjutsu lasted for. 
In the real world, they stopped moving except Naruto sliced Sasuke's throat and mumbled apologies mother. He turned his eyes towards the rogue Uchiha who stood smirking. Little Uchiha, you don't seem to be S-ranked from what I have seen of you. From my brother's information on your little group, the only weapon you have is your little Kamui trick from your Mangekyo, and being a Mangekyo user myself I know something that powerful has downsides such as the strain on the eyes and body. I bet you haven't even unlocked the third power yet have you? Your Taijutsu must be bad since you haven't fought in a long time and your ninjutsu will be quite good considering you are an Achiha by birth same as the Genjutsu but I wonder if we reach an impasse such as this what will happen if I lock space-time ninjutsu from our fight? This got a bead of sweat rolling down the man's temple, behind the mask, he was hoping he didn't know how to do that because it would be bad. Before he could think further Naruto was flashing through several hand seals that were unidentifiable to him. Behold the limit of my inheritance from the Uzumaki clan. He shouted as large black kanji appeared in the air making a dome around them. The real reason Uzumaki were feared was not their kenjutsu but their few ones. They had a style that the main house of Uzumaki could use and create seals in the air and manifest chakra like constructs. I am the last Uzumaki and I doubt my children will inherit my Uzumaki chakra or skills beyond any average shinobi. Prepare yourself for I want to see how you dance without your little tricks. He said and charged at the man. It soon became apparent that what Naruto said about the Uchiha was true, his taijutsu whilst mid-jonin level was nothing compared to his and the few ninjutsu he used were fire-related because he never bothered to learn anything else. Arrogance he did manage to capture Naruto in a genjutsu for about half a second which saved his head but earned him a nasty cut to the mask slicing the bottom half of it off. Naruto was surprised, this man didn't seem the genjutsu type like other Uchiha but he grinned like a madman as he smashed through it and attacked. Eventually the rogue Uchiha was on the floor panting and about to get killed when Naruto turned to get a sucker punch to the face sending him about 200 meters back and rolled several times. The unexpected attack made him lose concentration on the seal that was quickly draining his chakra and the Uchiha disappeared in his little space-time ninjutsu to fight another day. Naruto grunted as he got up, the top half of his armor served him well but it was torn off by the fighting leaving him shirtless. He looked up to see the rakage, you're up earlier than I thought. They heard a boom and looked over to see Killer Bead being transformed back into his human state with multiple cuts and bruises on his body with his right arm hanging by a thread of bone and skin. You want your brother to survive? A nodded. Take him and leave, I have no time for you anymore, but next time listen to your brother when he warns you against something you pig-headed fool or I will wipe Kumo from the map. As it stands now Kumo is now one of the weakest of the great five due to me slaughtering your armies all day. He finished with a wicked grin that sent a shiver down the rakage spine. The rakage nodded and took his brother away quickly leaving 2,000 men, Naruto, Madara and Kyubi in her full form. It's almost time now. He muttered hoping his family would forgive him, he was running on empty as it was and now he wasn't sure if he had the strength to survive this battle, he had done much more damage than the prophecy originally stated and faced much worse odds but knowing his family would be safe after this was a great load off his back. He looked over at Madara atop the bijou's head and growled, he didn't like that he considered Kurama family and let he be controlled. You dance well Naruto. Madara said with a true smile and using his name to show his respect for the man before him, I dare say that had I been alive you would have killed me once we fought but that's one of the perks of being dead isn't it? I can't die again. I'll take that as a compliment. Naruto said before Madara charged him for the first time, they began a fierce battle of taijutsu that could be called kage level, but as soon as it started it slowed showing how tired Naruto was, it wasn't long before Madara had the lead. What he didn't know was that Naruto wasn't fighting for the win but rather a change to land an open palm to the chest which he got soon enough and said contract seal. Several lines of fuwen spread across Madara's chest and the Kyuubi's eyes went back to normal, he jumped away before shouting leave Kurama. This is not your fight. He said before getting a kick to the face by an angry undead Uchiha, Kurama looked conflicted but when she saw Madara start to look at her to control her again she disappeared to give Naruto a fighting chance. Naruto stood up slowly as Madara approached him, you took my pet from me, you will have to be punished now. 
Naruto shakily got to his feet and spoke in a voice full of sadness as he ignored the fight with the Yachiha and continued blocking his fists and kicks automatically like a robot as he spoke. Kushina, remember these words for they may be the last I will ever speak to you. I love you and your mother so much, I've always had a hole in my heart that your grandmother and uncle tried to fill the best they could but it never worked, the social stigma I received when I was younger carried over to my adult years and for what it's worth cousin I apologize. I tried to be a good father to you but I had no idea on how to do it with not having one myself when growing up, you and your mother fill me with a will to fight that I've never had before, I've fought countless enemies in my younger days as I courted war to test my strength but I stopped caring when you came into my life. The toads will come for you like they did me Kushina, do not sign their contract, I will not have my daughter under the same pressure that I was under due to their prophecies if you need to learn sage mode just ask Karama, she was with me when I learnt and so was your mother but only Karama knows the ins and outs of sage mode. Practice well and become a force to be reckoned with. I'm sorry I will never get to beat the boys who you bring home down with my fatherly fist of love to show those scum that they aren't worth you but I'm sure you will find someone in the end. Naruto said as he felt his arm leave his body. He looked down to his right and bit his lip to stop him screaming, he was losing big time and now he was bleeding just as bad. He continued to talk to his daughter although he was panting from the pain. You will never be alone Kushina. You have two sisters on the way and I doubt your mother knows this, but take care of them, they will look to you since I am not around to guide them. One last thing to say, when you are in your darkest moment in life and you see no way to survive or help those you love and would do anything to save them, to protect them, hug the necklace I gave you close to your chest and pray for a miracle and I shall come. Death will not stop me, I will make it fear me in order to save you. Yujito, no words need spoke between us my love. Naruto finished as he was getting beaten constantly and the crowd of just over 2,000 shinobi were cheering for Madara. Naruto fell over exhausted as he looked over Madara grinning at him, fools they don't realize that they are next. Madara just shrugged not really caring, you were a good opponent and fought well considering your accomplishments today, I look forward to facing you in the afterlife. Naruto just chuckled getting a raised eyebrow from Madara. I'm not done yet. He said as he was coughing some blood. He thought and concentrated hard on the flow of his chakra, he still had enough to enter sage mode from earlier and did so for the boost for his last jutsu. He released the first two Hashiman gates giving himself a noticeable gain in strength allowing him to stand tall and proud before he placed his closed fist over his heart and smirked. I think I will die on my feet rather than on my knees. Gaining a smirk from Madara boosting his respect for the blonde shinobi more but before he could do anything Naruto continued. Simon, Shoman, Taman, Kaimon, Kaiman Kai. Seven gates released one after another blasting away several shinobi, Madara just stared unimpressed, he wasn't moving so he doubted he could and you didn't need to have a body in good condition to open the Hashiman gates as long as you didn't move. You know earlier when I used the contract seal on you? He asked getting an interesting nod from Madara. You are technically a summon yourself so I cut the connection between Kabuto and you which also cut the connection to the chakra that your body used to regenerate, you just haven't noticed yet. That was interesting to know Madara thought. Still it does nothing you are barely standing and you don't look like you can fight anytime soon. Watch me, Shimon. K-A-I-I. He screamed as his aura bled into a bright red mist showing the eighth gate had been released, his muscles bulged under stress. I have minutes to live now, but I want you to know something, I want the world to know something. This war could have been easily avoided had man not wanted more, this world will burn because man wants more and I won't be here to stop it a second time. The world in Madara watched on in interest as Naruto crouched down into the horse stance and screamed at the top of his lungs, I do this for you my queen. He shouted obviously referring to Yujido, a slash n, 300 movies reference gg. A dome of energy spread out miles upon mile until it stopped 50 miles from Naruto's current position and faded, leaving nothing but a crater in the ground and countless bodies. Madara had been disintegrated and Naruto stood panting as he slowly closed his eyes, I'll be waiting. He said softly falling to the ground. What he didn't know was that several Kanoha ninja were closing on his position to help him if needed and recover his body if he had already been killed and were just beyond the blast radius. 
They sped up and arrived just after Naruto fell forwards into an eternal sleep waiting for the day when his family needed him again. He was buried in the Uchiha crypt and had preservation seals placed on him to stop his body decomposing and the tomb was sealed only to be unlocked from the inside as per his request in his final will and testament. Years would pass as our hero slept away peacefully in the afterlife waiting with his parents and friends he thought he would never see again, waiting and watching the world, watching his daughter's life and his wife and she stayed a widow and hadn't move on. Watched as his wife gave birth to a healthy set of twin sisters. He waited for the call that would come, he waited for when his daughter needed him the most. The day came and he had to say that he was proud of her. Whilst she wasn't at his skill level for her age she was pretty damn close and was just a little worse off than him when it came to genjutsu. His other daughters were both tai and ninjutsu freaks creating new ninjutsu and taijutsu just like him leading their clans to new prestige. His brother had settled down with the ramen chef from his younger years I am and had a kid of his own, a son who was next in line after Naruto's children to heir of the Uchiha clan. Kurama watched his children and family from afar. Apparently she had her power back after being summoned and felt it was best to not get attached in case they died and she lived on but continued to protect them as a last promise to him her first true friend. Now he found his three daughters standing in triangle formation in front of a massive army of every ninja and samurai on the planet facing off against a reincarnated Madara and the rogue Uchiha from his last battle. Things would be alright if it was just them, all three of his daughter could handle them together but they had to split their attention between him the rogue Uchiha and the Jubi that somehow reformed which confused him to no end. He watched his daughter reach for her necklace, Tuchan, I know you can hear me, you never go back on your word and I need you right now, we need you right now. Help me and my sisters defend that which we hold dear. Naruto smiled, his little princess had matured greatly over the years and he couldn't be more proud of her. He stood from the log that he was sat on around the campfire in the pitch black with Sakumo Hataki and smiled. It's time. He said as he glowed brightly and disappeared. In the real world his body shimmered in and out of existence showing his use to forbidden kenjutsu from his clan at the cost of an eye called Inzanaji, he reformed with his arm and one pure white eye showing it was dead, he was happy that he still felt some of Kurama's chakra within him and the seals he had on at his time of death were still intact. He only had minutes before he would be needed on the battlefield and he felt it 100%, he unsealed the Mangekyo Sharingonite that he had stored on his body for years since the Uchiha massacre, the eye of Uchiha Shursue. He pulled out his eye and placed the other in his socket and used sage mode and what little of Kurama's chakra he had left to heal it. Time to dance. He said, before disappearing in a flash and landing on the battlefield, deflecting one of the hands of the Jubi from killing his children into the ground next to them causing smoke to appear around him and them obscuring them from the armies and Madara's vision. As the smoke began to clear he stood tall and proud topless as the day he had died, his outline surprised a lot of them because they didn't see anyone stand in front of the kids to take the blow. I told you I would be back Madara. A voice range across the battlefield stopping all fights, several people recognized this voice from a live broadcast years ago when he thought an army. No way. A mist shinobi said. It can't be. A lightning shinobi screamed. Get him away. Lastly a Suna shinobi said obviously seeing something others weren't. The smoke cleared completely and Naruto stood still with his arms across his chest smirking at Madara atop the Jubi. He stopped smirking when he heard a voice from behind him. Tu-chan? An uncertain Kushina voiced. He turned his head to face her and smiled a truly genuine smile towards her and her sisters. Stay here girls, it's not your time to fight something so strong yet. Let your Tu-san show you how we do it old school, eh? He smiled ignoring the fact that they were only now a few years chronologically younger than him. They nodded and his face turned serious as he faced Madara, his eyes bled into the EMS and a perfect Sasano appeared around him with him standing in the gem on its head. His daughter all stared at it in awe. Yes they each had the EMS as they had swapped one eye with another of the siblings and yes they could each use Sasano but none of his children ever took it as far as he did. His Susano's face suddenly tripled and one turned to the left and one to the right as four new arms sprung from its body, each holding a weapon. I told you I would be back Madara and now you seem to be alive, 
Let's see how well you dance when I am dancing fresh, shall we Madara? Madara smiled a small genuine smile like he did all those years ago when he was revived with Edo Tensai, yes. Let's. He shouted. Do you want to dance Madara? Silence reigned upon the battlefield, nothing could be heard yet everything seen. Naruto stood in front of his daughters and frowned slightly. I cannot see nor can I censor, where is my wife? He asked in a monotone voice promising pain if not answered, he saw each of his daughters flinch which already confirmed his suspicions. You rogue Uchiha, I shall show you what it is like to have everything ripped from you. I will let you have your little moment in the sun and then when you think you have won I shall destroy you and anything that you love and or have loved. By the time I am done you will but a speck in the sands of time being covered by other insignificant specks. Tell me Achiha, what is your name so I can wipe it from the history books? He said menacingly towards the unmasked Achiha who he fought years ago. Unfazed by such a string of comments even though he had lost to the man years ago after he defeated an army he replied, Abito Uchiha. Naruto perked up at the name, oh the little runt of the Uchiha clan from my father's genin team. I can see your life forming before my very eyes Uchiha runt. Kakashi always followed your little motto meaning something happened to change his viewpoint and I'm guessing it was something drastic such as your teammate's death. She was a kunawichi wasn't she? Rin Noera, if my mind isn't failing me. So let me take a stab in the dark here, you get crushed by rocks, Kakashi tries and fail to protect your female teammate whom you have a crush on like a little fanboy, you go nuts and my wife ends up dead because of it? Is that the gist of it? He asked in a deathly calm voice as most of the ninja flinch at his voice. Don't think I've forgotten about you Madara-chan. You obviously had a hand in setting the stage for this dance competition and because of it you will pay just as much as your comrade. Izuna Uchiha was your brother's name wasn't it Madara? How would you like to meet him again? I've always wondered who was the better Uchiha between the two of you since we obviously decided I was the better between us two last time. He ran through several hand signs before clapping his hands together in a prayer stance. Kuchios no Jutsu, Edo Tensai he proclaimed loudly getting coughing sounds from most of the ninjas since they were fighting Edo Tensai's all day and night. Two coffins rose from the ground and out came a woman and a man, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome back to the land of living Uchiha Izuna and Rin Noera. He shouted loudly and full of man ace. Kushina looked on in shock, she didn't know her father knew this jutsu or the fact that he could be so angry at one point in time. The amount of KI he radiated was enough to put several of the lower class ninja into a coma just by being in his presence. Izuna why don't you reunite with your moronic brother and Rin you will come with me to see your old friend Abido. He said finally. Both nodded, not being in full control of their senses. Rin followed Naruto as he ran towards Abito who just stood in shock at seeing Rin again. I want you to know that this could have been avoided had you listened to my warning years ago. I died to stop man wanting more and to protect my family and then you come along and revive this monster. He said as he placed his hand onto Rin's shoulder and smiled sadly. You my dear are going to be a casualty of war once again I'm afraid except this time I will be sure you are sealed into the reaper's stomach for all eternity but don't worry, Abito will soon follow you. This seal is special Uchiha runt, all damage you do to anyone in its range is transmitted via the seal and the outcome is a double treatment of the pain that the person suffers be it physical or emotional. She is at the moment suffering twice the pain I have since my wife is killed, not to mention the pain she is receiving from you. Oh look she is crying. He said with a small smirk as it was proven to be true, she was gushing tears and trying to fight back sobs that would escape. Did you know that the Six Realm Sage was actually an Uzumaki? He had a third child that was a daughter to carry on his line whilst the sons formed their own. The Rinnegan eyes he held were said to be able to create anything from nothing even breathing life into the bijou. The eyes were cheats to a very advanced technique that he passed down through the Uzumaki main branch house, i.e. his family. None since have been able to learn it but I am Naruto fucking Uchiha bitch and I break all the predictions and this isn't going to stop my goal. No, by the days end you and Madara are both going to die and the bijou shall be back in their original bodies but this time I shall make them disappear from the human world. 
They hold too much power and yet it is wrong to seal them against their wills, maybe a personal pocket dimension that will never collapse? Maybe another continent? Or even just a mountain range surrounded by space-slash-time seals to not allow trespassers, he mused out loud as the entire ninja world just got mind-fucked. His daughter watched their father, one was feeling nostalgia form again at seeing her father for the first time in years whilst the other two were feeling giddy to know their male parent. Say bye-bye to Rin no Obito-chan? He asked politely as he pierced the girl through the heart with what appeared to be Kakashi's Chidori technique just to piss Obito off more. The body fell apart into ashes and a spectral image of Rin ascending somewhere was seen, while that was until a spectral image of the Shinigami came and ate her in front of Obito. Abito seemed to go into shock at seeing his one-time love interest devoured by the Shinigami and fell to his knees. What to do with you now Uchiha runt, you are hardly a match for me and my daughters will kill you easily enough. Growl I want more revenge against you but I've already taken everything you held dear so I'm just going to kill you. He said as Abito's neck was slashed open. Everyone cringed, they had been trying to kill that guy for ages and Naruto comes in and does it in 10 minutes. Naruto jumped out of the way all of a sudden as a hand shot at him from the tail of the jubi, he looked towards it and growled in annoyance. I left Kurama on her own and she was absorbed into you, because of this I feel partially responsible for you being an issue, not to mention the fact that I left the world's armies in such a pitiful state that I'm surprised the alliance has an army to fight you with. He spoke to the jubi looking at it unafraid. He slammed his hands into the floor as hundreds upon hundreds of chains emerged for several few in Jutsu Kanji. They all wrapped around the jubi as his movement came to a halt. A noticeable sweat was seen upon Naruto's brow after his current action and his was panting quite a bit. You are just a beast. He said looking it in the eye, you are nothing more than an unimportant pawn waiting to be moved onto the checkboard by these blessed eyes and yet you are so much more at the same time. Allow me to restore your humanity. He said as he held the Hijitsu hand sign, the chain seemed to suck Yuki and transform it into chakra and nature chakra using Naruto as a conduit. Uzumaki Hijitsu, Kuchios no Jutsu, Biju he shouted at the top of his voice as the Jubi seemed to shrink in size and nine new bodies came into view. Madara saw this and tried to intervene but his brother was his equal before death and thus put up a bloody good fight. Shikako, Matatabi, Isabu, Sungoku, Kuko, Saiken, Shomei, Gyuki, Kurama. I call you forth, come, show this fool the futility of his plans. He said as his daughters stood behind him in awe of his power. Nine figures came into existence and their fists met in a bump directly above Naruto as he placed his fist against theirs. Isn't this the one we've been waiting for? The one father foresaw? I told you he would come. Father never lies. It's good to see you again, Naruto Kuen. Were just some of the opinions voiced. Matatabi, come forth. A giant flame cat with two tails walked forwards and bowed submissively, who killed Yujido, your last host, and my wife? He asked calmly. A pair of Akatsuki called Haydn and Kakazu, she was still weak from birthing your twin daughters and her chakra network wasn't fully recovered from her first birth either, it would have been when the girls were around 12 to 13 that her network recovered enough for ninja duties. She never stood a chance I'm afraid. She said sadly, she like Kurama had became good friends with her container but not to such as extent as Kurama. Are they still alive? he asked plainly. No your daughters killed them rather violently I might add, they all have traces of Kurama and my chakra in their system since they were birthed from two of our Jinhariki. She said sounding rather proud of that fact. He nodded in consent and faced his daughters and smiled at them. He couldn't deny that he was proud of them and their deeds and would be sure to shower them in all the love and praise he could for the rest of his life. Kurama came forth and bowed her head allowing her friend and family to climb on, she faced the Alliance and Madara who had been successfully restrained by his brother. These biju have changed. No longer are they beings of Yuki but nature chakra meaning they draw their chakra from the nature in the environment and surroundings. Try to seal them at your own risk for they will just turn any container to stone and be reborn quicker than before, I am an Uzumaki and Achiha, I never go back on my word and I am the strongest shinobi born in this era. 
This era is mine and I declare peace throughout, I dare you to try and stop me because I will annihilate you and your family and your family's family. Be warned. He turned to face the husk that was once the Jubi and now the Ghetto Meza statue once more, he couldn't for all of his powers seal it inside a new moon or the current moon like the Six Realm Sage and there was a chance that one day it would be summoned once more which could be a real pain. He could lock it into a personal dimension and then have it collapse on itself causing it to disappear from existence never to be seen again but he rather liked the idea of having a momenta of the moment he owned the Uchiha Runt and Madarachan. If he wanted to stop the ghetto reforming into the Jubi sometime in the future he would need to stop any chakra usage around it. An idea hit him. He slammed his hands into the ground as the statue raised high above them on a stone pillar, black markings set around it, sensor seals, elemental seals, gravity well seals to stop fools using chakra to climb the peak and finally chakra absorption seals of both the nature and pure variety. Should some fool get to the impossible task of the ghetto mezzo statue now and attempt to seal the biju the chakra would be redirected into nature chakra and sent out into the air where the biju would eventually reform. The perfect punishment, give the enemies means, opportunity and motive, but not give them chance to do any sort of evil plan. He grinned and had the biju go their separate ways promising not to destroy villages, Kurama obviously stayed with him and his family and he would have to use the kinfu and jutsu again to turn her into a temporary human like before. Maybe she could help fill the hole for his children as a mother role since he couldn't revive Yujido, he was going to miss her and he was sure as hell going to have some sort of mental breakdown later once he was alone with his daughters and Kurama. But for now he looked forward to seeing his children and spending all the time in the world with them and beating off boys with sticks for thinking that they could touch his pure daughters. He grinned, life was bad at the moment but it was getting better and would eventually be good.